Whiskey fam, what's up? Happy Saturday. I am Eric, your humble mob muser. Maria. And this is the lovely Maria. We're going to be hanging out, having a couple sips here on a Saturday night. And we got some bourbons lined up. We're going to do a couple single malts, pretty much whatever. We'll see what's going on. But uh, before we do that, let's see what's going on with folks in the chat. We already got Donner Pass in the house. What is single malts? Oh, no. We're pretty much whatever. Feedback we'll too, so that'll always happen. Donner Pass, hanging out at work. Other things out in California. Your home state. Yes, I miss home. <laughs> Maria's hanging out with us all the way over here in Philly. It's too cold. Too cold. Mm -hmm. So we already got a few folks. We got four folks in already. Sweet. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for hanging out. Daniel. What's going on, Maria and Eric? Daniel, how are things in East Texas? Daniel's a good friend of the show. Hi, Daniel. He hangs out. Keeps it real. Silverlock, Chicago, Eminem. <laughs> there we go. Eminem. Right. Love that. Yeah, we could roll with that, right? Like peanut stuff. Yeah, we could. Yeah, a little, definitely. A little peanut, a little the, nutty. It's the best yeah. one. The best one. The yeah. best. The best. I'm the one, one without the nut. You're, well, that just sounds weird now. <laughs> I made it weird. Okay. <laughs> I like it. What's going on, folks? Greg, coming from Paris. What is up in Paris? Paris. Oh my France, gosh, my friends you? in Paris. Mm. Greg's got a sweet whiskey channel. He's in Paris. I'm jealous. And we got a bunch of folks hopping in. What's up? Cold Ooh. and wet in East Texas. Okay. Cold and snowing in Chicago. Eminem International. Eminem is international. Yes, we are. We definitely are. Cool, cool, y'all. Glad to have folks in. We're going to hang out, have a couple drinks. Maria's have been slowly getting into a whiskey journey. And so we're going to have a couple things tonight to taste together and uh, talk a little bit about. And then we're going to do a couple single malts later. So we kind of ride this uh, ride this train. So Maria, wait. So just before we start, because I'm very new. I'm very new. Very new. No, I'm very good at drinking. Not sure what I'm drinking with the whiskey world. Mm -hmm. But what does single malt mean? Just so I'm clear. That's a great question. Because you're you're having me taste a few different malts of malts. That's true. So single malt. Okay. Great question. Is basically a, a whiskey in Scotland. Single meaning it's made in one distillery, and malt meaning it's 100% barley. So malt 100% barley. Single one bear one distillery. One distillery. Exactly. So if you think about it, you can also get things like Johnny Walker, right? And y'all okay. probably know about Johnny Walker. Johnny Walker is like called a blended scotch because it's but it's getting uh single malts from multiple places, putting it into a bottle, but they can't call it a single malt because that's all the other malts. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So it's okay. just a bunch of mix of stuff. And so, so but when you say one distillery, what are they doing? Moving whiskey around different places? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'd be selling it, right? So we'll have like so for example, the one that you've been enjoying so I like far, this one. She's a big fan of the Glendronic yeah. 15 Revival. So all of the whiskey in this bottle comes from Glendronic. Right. Right. So there's no whiskey in there from Highland Park. There's no whiskey in there from any other distillery. Right. So this is just okay. like their product. Single malt. Exactly. Single and that's the way that's the way we roll. We don't that's really how I around. roll now, apparently. Yeah. Single malt. Yeah, exactly. We don't One mess distillery. around with the blends. One distillery. Bar really barley, malt. barley. 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 You got it. Mm. So, but you've been drinking some bourbon lately. I right? have. I have. Tell me a little bit about your little bourbon journey you've been on. Oh, why it's so embarrassing. I don't know. I, it, the journey's been very, Ooh, it's been there... bullet. It's been the, what is it? It's bullet, right? Mm -hmm. And so my favorite drink is old fashioned. And so I knew that I had a little thing for the, for something. Yep. Um, but I've been doing the bourbon and then I started doing it without all the other stuff in it. Um, and I was like, oh, this is nice. nice. I would put like one cherry in it because yeah, why not? Right. And then I took the cherry out and then I was, and then I slowly gotten rid of some of the ice. And so now I can drink it. I sip, but it's just not very good. Like I just kind of like don't want it anymore. Yeah, the and bullet. Then, yeah, no, yeah. it doesn't do anything for me. But I also have no clue what I could buy that I would like because nobody wants to buy a bottle and then you don't drink it all and then you're, it's gross. What do yeah, you exactly. And so that's why we're gonna taste a bunch of stuff tonight. Yeah. But you had a couple other ones other than bullet, no, right? At my place, I, well, yeah, I did. You were wild drinking turkey. something else, wild turkey. Wild is that bourbon? Yeah. Bourbon. I like the wild turkey. Yeah. Though is it one one? Yep. The I like 101. that one. She likes the hot oh, proof stuff. Yeah, and then um, I just I just started liking, um, is it Monkey Shoulder? Mm -hmm. I like that one. She got herself a scotch blend. So I did. Dip, dipping your toes into that a little bit. And a scotch blend is because it has from different distilleries. distilleries. Yeah, you got it. So okay. Monkey Shoulder is like three distilleries that they bought stuff from, blended into one drink, a okay. blended scotch. A blend of scotch. And then straight to your doorstep. Well, okay. 
Well, what I think I didn't like at first, so this is what I think I'm trying to slowly discover is I noticed that I didn't like the shoulder the monkey. I didn't like the monkey when I first had it. It made me, I think even like gag a little. I was like, oh. Um, but then I let it sit. And that's when I, that's when you educated me on how it does need to breathe and yeah, all yeah. that fun stuff. So now I actually think it tastes better that I've let it right you know, on. do its thing. Yeah, and monkey shoulder is a great starter scotch, especially for folks who are like just getting into it. They don't quite know what they want. A lot of people have mis, mis, uh, miseducated about scotch. It's a lot like tequila, right? You know, you all know this, right? People all think what? every scotch is smoky or something like know. that. And clearly that's not the case. No, because I actually don't prefer smoky. Although I did get the privilege of tasting something super fancy. Yeah, we had was, Lagavulin 12 the other day. Yeah, and that was like, Wah. it was like, <laughs> it was like a campfire just flowing out of my mouth. Yeah, exactly. So, um, that's kind of where Maria's at in her journey. Mm -hmm. And I've pulled together a couple of drinks for us tonight to, uh, you know, test the palate, see what she likes. Here's what we got going. So first and foremost, we got two bourbons from one of my favorite lines from Old Forester. We're gonna do the Prohibition Edition. This is uh, 115 proof, and we're gonna do the 1897 bottled in Bond, which is 100 proof. So we're gonna test both of these and uh, see what Maria's got to think about those. Okay. Um, let's catch up here on the chat and say some hi to some folks. See what's going on with everybody before we get into this. Actually, you know what, first, why don't we get one of these in the glass? So we're gonna start with the Prohibition Edition. Ooh, a nice mint julep. You know what, I don't think I've ever had a mint julep. Yeah. What's a mint julep? I, obviously, he's uh, Greg, you said with rye. So what, tell me about the- Mint julep's a good cocktail, yeah. It's, bur or it's usually rye and or a high rye bourbon. And then it's, um, I think it's just like mint leaf. And then what else is it? It's like a seltzer or something like that. I can't quite remember. Hmm. It's a it's a solid cocktail for sure. Let's see what else is going on here before we jump into this. All right. Peter White's in the house coming from Ontario, Canada. What's up, Peter? How you doing? I get you all over the place. I know, man. Okay. We're, we're international tonight. <laughs> we're international. When I get home late tonight, looking forward to opening a box of whiskey ordered in December from the Netherlands. December oh, December 12th. I think I know something about December. 12th. Me too. Yeah. My, is that your birthday? It's my birthday. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. It's gonna be a good one. There you go. It's definitely gonna be a good whiskey. And plus, it's Donner Pass, and he doesn't mess around. So. Mm. Silverlock saying hi to Maher. Oh, Maher's in the house from India. <gasps> India, nice. What's up, buddy? How you doing? Welcome. Glad you could come hang out. We got twelve folks in the chat. This is great. Folks, say hi if you got anything good in the glass tonight. Let us know, and let us know what you think about Old Forester, because we're gonna be diving into this. In just a few minutes after we catch up with everybody. No nonsense, Whiskey. What's up, buddy? How are you, man? Salancha. Cheers. Good to see you, man. I haven't seen you around in a little while. Hope you're having a good year so far. Been checking out your channel. If y'all do not sub to his channel yet, take a second and sub to No Nonsense Whiskey. Take a second and sub to Greg's Whiskey Guy. Two people making really great Whiskey Tube content. So you guys definitely should do that. He says, you're not such a newbie. No, you're not that noob. Like you've been, Thank you. Yeah, uh, you've been getting into okay. a couple. You've been getting into Who told me that? Who said that? That was that was our friend Greg over in Paris. Greg, thank you. I So like, he's so cool. Like he just knows everything about it, about it I, I think. And so I feel very like uneducated. And so it's like, I taste it and I feel very basic. Like, oh, well, what do I you're taste? You're getting there though. But I think I am getting there. So thank you. I appreciate that. Cause I'm trying to kind of learn all the little words here and there. Yeah, and you're getting mad props for loving the the uh, revival, Glendronic, which we Thanks. were sipping on. That yeah, a... so I didn't realize. I think I have good taste, huh? Yeah, I have I would good say taste, so. guys. I'd say she's got good taste. And I, yeah, I don't even know what my taste is yet. It's good. Yep. Daniel says you're that's a winner. Mike Myers in the house. What's up, Mike? Good to see you. Good to see you. Who else we got in here? Folks saying hi to each other. Peter White saying hi. Uh, oh, mint julep. Somebody asked me, and I haven't had it, Greg. I That's what I was thinking. I haven't had oh, mint yeah. julep. So that needs to happen. That does need to happen. Yeah. I don't remember what the other thing is in that, though. I want to say, I think you're right. I think it's the mint. Yeah, they put mint in it. I think I would like that, whiskey. Greg, because I do like me a little mint, and I clearly like me some of this. So. Yeah, exactly. We'll just take a quick look on the old Google machine and see what, go what goes into the mint julep, because I totally forget. Oh, okay, yeah. So it's bourbon or rye. Four mint leaves, and then it's just like like a, a simple syrup or powdered sugar. So it's almost it's like sweet. It's like a sweet okay. minty drink. They're really known like that. because that's like a um, Kentucky. What is it? The the uh, the horse race, Kentucky Derby. Kentucky the mint Derby. julep is like the thing that everybody drinks. That really? yeah. So it's a thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Maher says that uh, the monkey shoulder is a great blended malt. Yeah, I think it's a yeah. totally solid. I'm getting there. Yep. Daniel's getting into some of that Alberta cast drink. Oh, nice, man. You should tell. Yeah, you have to tell me what you think about that. I am. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure what I think about it quite yet. I have a bottle of it, and I think the nose on that was really amazing, but it's so hot. The nose, huh? Yeah, the nose on that whiskey was really good. So, so break it down. Yeah. So basically, it was you like, smelled it. Yeah. Or not. Exactly. Okay. And I think I have a bottle of this. So, you know, maybe we can mess around with that a little bit later. But so when you say the nose, because I'm learning how you taste it from different parts, right? Yeah, like exactly. it goes in, do a little yeah. gurgle, a little some some, mm -hmm. and then but you as you drink it and breathe it in and out, there's like all sorts. Yeah, of Yeah, you start noticing. Where's the nose at? So the nose is kind of what we're going to get into in the beginning, right? Which okay. is just when we start kind of. Oh yes, I figured. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, so that one in particular was really, really good. I, I enjoyed it, but then it kind of, I don't know, I found it to be kind of hot and had a short finish, but you have to tell me what you think about that, bud. And you can always hit me up on Instagram with that. 1920 is so legit. Yeah, that's the first one we're going to go with. Did y'all try No Old Forester's releasing a oh. rye cast strength? Ooh, I did not, but I'm interested. That sounds really good. What's Rare Breed? Mike's sipping it. Oh, Rare Breed is a... Uh, a barrel strength wild turkey. So, you know, you were drinking the barrel strength, what the wild turkey 101, which is like high ABV. Uh -huh. So imagine if it was at even higher, like basically straight out of the barrel. So it's not watered down at all. Okay, I see so you, like, Mike. Yeah, Over Mike's not throwing it out. Mike's not messing around. Mm. Mike's going for the heavy stuff. That's like, I don't know, what is that, 56% ABV, something like that? Yeah, Mike's not playing. That's a good drink. He just did a, his first 1920 and gets peanut butter, says Jack the Pickled Hound. What's up, Jack? How are you? Thanks for swinging through. It's getting get late. Yeah, here in the UK, right? I can imagine. It's got to be getting Oh, closer. he's going to take his bottle out. Good for you. <laughs> Look at it, right? People get a little motivated, a little sick. Yeah, I was going to say Saturday. that. Saturday. Yeah. The 1920 is uh, the 1920 is is what? Like, that's probably pretty expensive over in the UK, if I'm not mistaken. I just drank this. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. okay. Enjoy it. We're going to dive into it in just a second here. At Mall Music, Alberta Premium did smell amazing. But it's the spiciest rye, most spicy rye. And you know me, I'm a rye guy. So I like water. Yeah. So when you. you when you say a rye guy, like what does it make you? What's the difference? It's a major difference between a bourbon and a rye, right? Right. So bourbon has to be 51% corn minimum right. in the in the recipe. Corn. Rye. So you could have rye. So like a bourbon could be 51% rye, 49%, or I'm sorry, 51% corn, 49% rye if you wanted to. Like a really spicy bourbon. But a rye, it has to be the opposite. It has to be at least 51% rye. Okay. In the in the recipe. in order to call it a rye, exactly. Got it. So there's a lot of different bourbons, as as everybody here knows, that are going to be like, you know, some bourbons will have like 20% rye, 15% barley, stuff like that. Oh yeah, Redbreast 12 cast strength is one of my favorite. That's an interesting head to head. I love. I actually we polished off some Redbreast 12 cast strength the other night. I did. It was delicious. All right. Okay, y'all. So um, as I mentioned. I'm pouring two bourbons from probably one of my favorite bourbon lines. These are like mid-shelf bourbons, not very expensive, but I think they're really, really tasty. And these are from Old Forester, which is in Louisville, Kentucky. And this is a, they have four different releases from this thing called the Whiskey Row Series. Okay? okay. So this Whiskey Row Series is supposed to be kind of throwback to early bourbon recipes. Old Forester was one of the first people to ever bottle bourbon. Can I touch it? You can totally touch it. And basically, <laughs> so basically, this is like um, this one is supposed to be of the style that the whiskey they were making during Prohibition, right? So the story behind it is, is that old the Forester he was a he was a pharmacist, and he somehow got legal the opportunity to sell the stuff behind his pharmacy, right? And so he was selling stuff all through Prohibition, and this is supposed to be kind of an homage to the style of bourbon that was going. Oh, okay. So this one's coming in pretty heavy, fifty-seven point five percent ABV. And that's the alcohol content. Yeah. So the like, higher the alcohol content, the better. The more the flavor. The more the, more the flavor. flavor. The more, more intense, intense the flavor. Exactly. I'm getting there. So there's no age on this one, but we can probably assume it's like five or six years old, maybe. And um, I really like this. This is like a $60 bottle USD. I think it's punches above its weight. It's one of my favorite bourbons. I've enjoyed this entire series. And uh, Marie and I are going to jump into this right now. What do you say? Yeah. Yeah. Right, I'm always do down it. to drink. Okay. Cool. Cool. So. The nose. First thing we'll do is check out the nose. And we'll look for kind of like the dominant notes, right? So on this one, I can tell you off the start, I get a lot of like oak, oak spice. Like it smells like burnt wood. Brown sugar. 
I get cherry. Cherry, definitely. A little cherry Coke, maybe? Cherry Coke, right. So mine, I'm getting a little more on the root beer side, but the cola, the cola thing is there. It's got this effervescence. And it's actually one of the things I really love about this style of bourbon that these guys make. It has just this kind of deep cola notes, dark kind of caramelly, stuff like that. I do, yeah, the caramel you can kind of get. Yeah, for yeah. sure, for sure. You notice anything else? There is a there's a spice to it, but I can't quite put my finger on what it is. It's not cinnamon. It's a little cinnamon. Cinnamon, yeah, definitely. Um, what is that? What's that smell? What's that spice? I know I can't quite figure it out. It's almost like like allspice. Do you know what allspice is? I mean, I use allspice. I, I can't remember yeah. last time I smelled it. Yeah, it's kind of like that. So it's like a blend. It's I don't know. It's a little bit rounded. It's not super like assertive, but. All in all, it just smells great. I, it really does smell like, like you were saying, cherry cola, like those cherry cream sodas, like you know, you see in the yeah. movies where you go to the soda fountain in the fifties, and it's like the cherry in the Coke. That's I get so much of that on this. Yeah. No, Root I taste. Too. Yeah, I taste cherry. I smell cherry. All right, let's give it a taste. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Happy Saturday, y'all. Mm. Oh yeah, that's like. Hmm. That's really good. It's hot. What's that? Sp Wait, so it's spicy a little bit. It is spicy. So there's probably some rye in this, but I think some of the spice is coming off the barrels too. Let us know in the comment section, y'all, if you have had Old Forest or any of the Whiskey Row series or the Prohibition Edition style specifically. Tell us what you think of it. I can't quite put my finger. I, I think it's like, so it's like um, definitely cinnamon. It's like cinnamon sugar, and then there's like a pepper thing, and it's like cayenne pepper. It's not like black pepper. No, it's not black pepper. There's a pepper note for sure. It just gives it heat, so I can see why it would be kind. Like, what's it saying? Kind of pepper? Yeah. Yeah, cayenne pepper. You cayenne know pepper, what I mean? Yeah. I can but see it that. doesn't have that like acidity, like a like a jalapeno or something. No, 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 no. Yeah. yeah, it's just the heat. Yep. It's creamy though, too. Don't you think? It's got kind of a nice kind of creamy mouthfeel until until the spice kicks in. Yeah. Caramel, toffee. It actually is a lot like the soda-y kind of creamy, cherry-ish. Yeah, kind of bubbly, kind of effervescent. I'm kind of surprised by the heat after it. A lot of that has to do with the fact yeah. that it's such high alcohol. And so what we're going to do, just to see what else happens here, is I'm going to put a, we'll go ahead and put a few drops of water on this one. See what happens. Okay. And I might tone down that heat just a few. We'll find out. Oh, look at this fancy thing. I know, right? Got to be very precise. So you just put two drops, correct? Yeah, this is like two or three drops. So it's, I don't know, like a quarter teaspoon. So they probably brought the alcohol content down to like 52, 51. Who knows? So I did a lot of wine tasting. Mm -hmm. And so is it similar with wine? Because I notice sometimes when I twirl, you know, you see a little legs, but do the legs mean anything for you guys? That's a good question. So um, basically the slower and thicker they move has a lot to do with the like alcohol content, right? So on one of these, you oh. notice they move kind of slow which is telling us a lot about the alcohol level in this. So if it has higher alcohol level, then it's a little thicker, you're saying? Yeah, and then they move a little bit slower, right? It's just like the viscosity of it. Yeah, yeah. And the age has, plays a part too, but I'm sure some folks have some other thoughts on that as well. Beth Higgins is in the house. What's up, Beth? Shoot. Greg, Greg, Greg's a, I thanks, Greg. You're building my self-esteem right now. Where, where's Greg? He at? said, I'm kind of good. I'm getting it. Yeah, yeah. And I literally, this is my first, what, weekend, really, yeah. learning the whiskey. Really, intensely. really getting into it. I've been, we've been focused. Yeah. I've been taking it all in. Yeah, exactly. So, with the water, do you okay. notice anything different on the nose on this? It smells sweeter. Yeah. It's for sure. sweeter. And for yeah. Sure. I'm getting the same thing. I actually get more of the cherry. I like the cherry. I didn't think I would, but I like that. I think part, you know, you were mentioning that um, you really liked the Wild Turkey 101. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I really like about Wild Turkey. Can I drink it? Yeah, go for it. One of the things I really like about Wild Turkey is that it has that kind of cotton candy cherry note. But yeah, let's see what happens with this with water now. Definitely tame down the heat. See, I don't know. I just feel like it got a little hotter. Really? I don't know. It could have. It could be me. It could be me. Yeah, give I'm me another sip. See what happens. Again, though, it's sticky. This is a real sticky whiskey. 
You know what I'm saying? I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> it's like it's it's, it's like, going down good for it's me. It's oily. It it's oily. It like sticks to the mouth. There's like a it's got a residue, these, like a, a film. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I'm getting a lot more like dark chocolate. And yeah, like, I'm getting something different. Yeah. So it's almost water, like a little that sharpness of the dark chocolate. Yep. And maybe even a little bit of a coffee note as well. Mm. But it, it hangs around for a while. Though. The flavor on this. You know what I like right now is that the heat has passed. Mm -hmm. And then as I sit here, you know, you get the little extra saliva going on. Mm -hmm. That's the cherry Coke I like. Yeah. It's like totally like, yeah, cherry, cherry Coke. Coke. Definitely. Cherry Coke with alcohol, which is probably the best way to drink cherry Coke. Winning. Hmm. <laughs> That's delicious. Mm -hmm. I love their style. And I definitely get that cherry thing even more now. And it's a little bit more drying with the water. Don't, don't move it, don't move it. What else we got going on? Oh, right, good to know. Thank you, Greg. Um, Because it does, it gets intense. Like there've been times where I've sipped it, Greg, and it, it literally everything, my eyes, water, yeah. the whole situation gets, and then I look like, I don't know what I'm doing. That's absolutely right. I'm and so like, you see some of these videos where people are nosing a whiskey and they're like going like this, like, like, like with like a wine, you like shove your whole nose in. And what we were talking about is like, kind of like keep it a little bit away from your nose, but yeah. just enough so that you can pick up some of it, you know? Yeah. Because otherwise you get in that situation where. Where's the cotton candy? I'm not in this, there's no cotton candy here, but I just noticed that that is something that people mention when they taste different. Like how many whiskeys taste like cotton candy? Come on. I get a cotton candy note in Wild Turkey. Like really? pretty much, yeah. So like Wild Turkey 101, I get the cotton candy marshmallow cherry you, thing. You said that. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I think is a really distinct thing you get from the Wild Turkey folks. And I think most of their bourbons, without exception, have that. Okay. The 101, a lot. So when you were talking about- I thought about it was more caramel. I thought it was more vanilla-y for me, right? Or caramel corn? Yeah, the caramel corn. Yeah, yeah. like that popcornish kind of- Yeah. You know? Yep. I totally know what you mean. Yeah, I mean, it comes off a little bit different for everybody, and but I think ultimately that's one of the big, Just that's one of the big flavors that I get off of that. What's Jack tasting over there? What's Jack up to? New York Young CS Bourbon Dry No Cherry. I'm not familiar with that one. Show her the Kentucky Chew. <laughs> that helps dissipate the heat. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> we'll do that on the next one. That is absolutely true. Um, the... Uh, like we were talking about chewing your no, whiskey when you're yeah. tasting it. No, no, hold on a second here. I didn't know this was a thing. So when we were doing like FaceTime and doing the tastings at my in LA, I realized I was like, this is he eating something? Like is, he, <laughs> like, is there a mint I should have? Like, or is he cleaning his palate? But the whole time he's just got a Yeah. But you're literally chewing. Like yeah. you're like, and that's just I thought it was candy this whole time. Yeah, no. It's a good way to just like, and as Beth mentioned, and, and I think you're totally right, Beth, it does kind of help kill a little bit of the heat. And it really gives the whiskey a lot of time to stay in your mouth and get the, all the different flavors you can try to get out of it. So that's one of the helpful parts of it. Mm. It's so weird to chew if I don't have food. Yes, I agree with you. That's a little bit on the strange side. A but, bit. you know, I think I do the, that's my <laughs> thing. People chew. I, and I feel like air is going to go in and, oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure you got the, like, heat in your chest from drinking this one a little bit. Yeah. It's called the Kentucky Hug. Yeah. Oh, I got a little, a little Kentucky Hug. Yeah. Kentucky loves you. All right. So uh, I'm going to get this one in the glass. You let me know when you're ready. And we're going to do another one. So this is from the same series. Um, this one is just bottled in bond and is a little bit, so it's a little bit lower in the ABV. But it's basically from the same distillery, same series. It's going to be a little bit different, a little bit less alcohol. We're going to see if there's some different flavors in here. And then when we're done, Maria's going to do them blind and see which one she likes the most. I'm going to get it. I'm going to be so good at this. Yeah, you are. You're going to be all over it. All right. You know what I notice is it's very hard, I think, to tell a lot of differences when you're getting that burn. Mm -hmm. And like for me, I'm very, like, very, very new to this. So I think when you're tasting this, it the burning part, can be overwhelming and therefore people don't tap into any el anything else they're they're tasting. I agree. Yeah. That's I mean that's what happens to me. Yeah. And I find that like the burn usually hits the most of course on the first sip. Yeah. And so like after you do a couple more and this is when like water comes in as well where you can kind of tone things down a little bit. Okay. So next one we're going to do here as I said, bottled in bond 
Uh, let us know in the chat if you had this or what your favorite of this Whiskey Row series is at all. Um, this one is the 50% ABV 1897. And it's supposed to be, again, hearkening back to uh, the Bottle and Bond Act passed. Uh, I believe it was in that year, actually. Um, and kind of what it did to bourbon. So, Yes, Mike. I got a little Kentucky hug. I felt that. Feeling it? Yeah, I like that. You'll probably get that off this one too. Well, don't you have to clean your palate? What are you doing? You're right. We can do that. Well, I did have a little bit of water. Here, let's do that. Oh, I'm gonna do a little popcorn. Mm-hmm. Have some water too. Okay. <laughs> the popcorn will just make the whiskey taste better, probably. But could you could you possibly do like a coffee? You know how like I know where do they do coffee? They do coffee where you can that use that to kind of clear the palate. Coffee beans. Coffee beans with the smell. Yep, definitely, yeah. definitely can. Okay, no doubt. So, all right. Okay. So we're gonna dive into the eighteen ninety seven. Eighteen ninety seven. This is this one. The only major difference in terms of that we can tell uh -huh. is the alcohol proof. So this one is this one is. Reminiscent of the Bottled and Bond Act of 1897. And so the thing about that is, mm -hmm. is basically people were like selling all sorts of scam counterfeit stuff in the like late 1800s and calling it bourbon. And so people were getting ripped off, all of this, et cetera, et cetera. And basically what ended up happening was the government passed this thing called the Bottled and Bond Act. And what that did in the U.S. was tell you that like if you if the whiskey says Bottled and Bond, it has been aged in a government supervised warehouse. It is 50% alcohol by volume. It is, I believe, at least four years old. And it was made in like one, it was bottled in one season. So basically what you're getting here is like, this was a way that the US government tried to like stop all the illegal bootlegging and scamming that was going on with bourbon back in the day because people were coming home thinking they bought some good bourbon and it was hot Lies. garbage. It wasn't good, right. So, so, this, so this one was the one that they made so that you knew you were getting good bourbon yep. and you could, okay. And there's a lot of whiskeys, a okay. lot of whiskeys out there that, you know, and I like to keep my eyes peeled for them that will call, they're called bottled and bond. Okay. It's not a big deal anymore because there's really not a lot of scamming going on. There's not like- No scams going on? Not no. like it was in the okay. 1800s, but the style, getting a whiskey that's 50%, we know that'll be a little bit more flavor because okay. it's got more alcohol in it. Um, so let's dive in. So, but if it has more flavor, this is something, the burn part, because I feel like when I talk to other people in my world that don't do the whiskey thing, you know, that's what they always bring up is the burn, the burn. Mm -hmm. Now, how, wh what makes the burn less or greater? It's a really good question. The, the, I think the alcohol burn can happen for a lot of reasons. One can be a really high alcohol, uh, alcohol by volume. So it could be like a 50 some percent whiskey and it's got a lot of burn because there's just a ton of alcohol in it. Okay. But the other thing is it can be young. So like younger whiskey tends to be edgier, more aggressive. You get more of the ethanol on it. Yeah. yeah. So like when you go to the store, you buy some like bottom shelf bourbon, it could be 40%, which is the legal minimum. But as we all know, that can get gnarly because you know it has crap flavor and then you get a lot of alcohol after. Yeah, you get the burn. It's not well, it's not put in good barrels, okay. all this stuff. Okay. So basically like it's a combination of factors, but as, as we'll probably see eventually, um, things can be high alcohol by volume and not have the burn and that's a sign of you know some of its qualities. So, I need some of that. Yeah, well, we might be able to get into, into that right here. So we'll see what's up. All right, we're gonna drop in with the bottle okay, and bond okay, here. Okay, we're gonna smell, we're gonna do a little. Let me see what's going on here in the chat. Yeah. Talk to your people. 1910s, too much cherry. The 1910 was a, I liked that one quite a bit. Brandor, what's going on? Cheers. Yeah, excellent daily sipper. I think that's one of the best out of the bottle. Like you don't need to put any water on it. It's like perfect as is. It's great. Five whiskeys in a row cuts down on the burn. <laughs> yes, that's true, Beth. Beth is totally right. Totally right. Dana said Bottle and Bond Act was actually the first consumer protection legislation ever passed in the United States. How you about that? Said? That's how important whiskey is. 1920s is favorite. And that's the one we just had. 1910s, okay. I like them all. Heck of good 100. Yeah. All right. So let's dive into this one. Very different. I'm thinking. It's vanilla. A lot more vanilla. Tons more vanilla. I agree with you. Also corn. Just like it's, this yeah. is much sweeter. It doesn't have that, those, as much of those dark notes that we were getting on the other one. It was a little bit dark fruit. There was a little bit of that oak spice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I'm not getting that enough sugar. No, it doesn't smell. It doesn't smell spicy. Not at all. This one smells a lot creamier and a lot Creamy. sweeter. Yeah. I like. It. I like the way it smells. Yeah. 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 This Caramel. Is, yeah, for sure. For right. Sure. Yep. I'm right there with you. Maybe even a bit of brown sugar. I don't know how you smell brown sugar though. That's and that's another thing when you're like new to this. I, when you say shit like that, I'm like, okay, brown sugar. <laughs> I'm telling you, right? I, like, I get brown sugar. How do you know what brown this. sugar? I just have you ever you ever opened a bag of and just like smelled what brown sugar smells like? It's like molasses. No. It's kind of like um, yeah, it's kind of like molasses, almost like a dark maple syrup. Yeah, I mean, I get your, I get where you're going, but it's just yeah. really, it's for somebody who's you know. You know. Okay, well, all right, let's give it a okay. taste. You ready? All right, cheers. Cheers, cheers. Mm. Hmm. Peter, what is he saying? I don't know. I don't think he's talking about this one, but I saw not much burn. Oh, the and so that's the only thing I noticed. And I was like, yeah, it doesn't burn as much, Peter. <laughs> but he's not talking about this one. <laughs> no, but he's totally right. Um, yeah. I agree, Indy. Smells like delicious. This is yummy. Yeah. I fuck with it. I mean, yeah, it's good. Yeah. So what I noticed I like on it. this one, a lot less spice. Yeah, no, there's there's no heat. There's, there's no, no there's hardly any heat. And no. this is only dropped by two point what like this is only seven point five percent less alcohol. So it's still fifty percent. So it's still heavy. But it's a lot more um balanced, right? It's a little bit less less intensity, it doesn't yeah. have the spice. Doesn't have the oak, the oak, the the oak spice as much, but still has some of the same qualities as the mm -hmm. other one. You know, like I don't get as much of the cherry, but I get more like, um, I guess similar to that one is that root beer note, that cola note. Yeah, the, I was just about to say that. It's like I still there's like a cherryness to it, but it's not as intense as as the other one. Yeah, I agree, definitely not, and that's definitely mm -hmm. coming from the proof. And and are they like the same color too? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. So good thing to know. Unlike scotch, bourbon cannot like, be. Like, does color like, matter? It matters. Color, color can matter. I mean, it definitely tells you, like, it can give you some indication of the type of age that it is. Oh, you know what I found out, guys? And so when you get one that is more colored, what the cherry the cherry barrels. Oh, the, it, sh the cherry ones. Yeah, yeah, it makes them darker, right? Yeah, yeah. So the darker the, the darker will let you know on the, on the fruit uh, or, like, whether or not they used first fill or second fill. Yeah. With that one bourbon or the one in specific. Okay. Anyways, let me get another sip of this. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's good. I love it. <laughs> he said it smells like delicious. Uh, he's not lying. This is fantastic. It's just something I would have said. It smells delicious. <laughs> and that's a thing. I like this one. I do too. It's a little bit shorter on the finish, though. It doesn't it's very, it, yeah. yeah. It kind of drops off a little quicker. I'm just, I'm so excited when I figure things out. <laughs> <laughs> a new fun hobby. Indeed. Okay, yeah, because it's very quick. There's no, like, <sighs> fire. I didn't get the hug. Nobody hugged me. No, not on this one? No, a little, maybe a little bit. Yeah. A little tap on the shoulder. A little tap. <laughs> you got the Kentucky tap? <laughs> yeah, I got the Kentucky tap. <laughs> you be all right, girl. <laughs> All right, so let's do a little bit of water on this one too. Oh, look at that, Mike! Mike, thank you, Mike. Mike has hope in me. He said, "When does Maria, Maria's whiskey channel launch?" Mm. There you go. Okay, got to educate keep, them, you folks. Got to keep them in mind. You might have, you might have to get. I might just rain start. on all your parades here. <laughs> Push him out. It's, it's hey guys. <laughs> Welcome to the Maria back, show. But I want you back there telling me what I'm supposed to be smelling wow. and tasting. <laughs> Agreed, Jack. Totally agree with you on that. So that, Maria, most of us started like that. I also, Dan at times, cannot identify some flavor notes, and my friends get in the whiskey. Yeah, he's right. Oh, and that's yeah. part of the journey. Okay. So we did, we Thank did a, you. Yeah, and we did a tasting. Uh, Maria and I did a tasting with the Jack Rose Saloon um, down in D.C., famous whiskey bar. And we had some really good stuff, didn't we, yeah. from Willet. Yeah. We had an eight-year-old rye. And four, a four-year-old, four eight-year-old, seven. And then a seven-year-old bourbon and the eight-year-old bourbon. Yeah. All single-barrel picks. 
And they were talking about that a bit too, you know, like yeah. it's it's one of these things where it's subjective and people kind of, you know, like the way they describe doing tastings, which I thought was really interesting is that, yeah, you know, you meet people and they pick up stuff that you can't pick up at all. But at the same time, it's like- Malted Maria reviews. There you go. There you go. Love it. There you go. I like oh, it. But finish. They, the, the tasting thing. I like yeah. it too. I and like they the were, They were talking about how like, at the end of the day, really, you're trying to find the subtleties, not mm -hmm. necessarily the dominant flavors, right? Because right? the dominant flavors, most people will pick up, you know, and again, with bourbon, caramels, you know, right. we'll pick that up. We're gonna get a caramel on basically everything. Right, so, so but but I do have to say, I think your advice to me was really good because I was like, where do you pick up all these like nutmeg and anise and this? And so it's like you said, I should get all the spices Mm -hmm. And just like take time smelling them and tasting to see like, and that's how yeah. I can make the association. So anybody who, I mean, I think all your friends drink whiskey, but like, see, that's why I need my channel. Yeah. Because the people I, that don't drink whiskey, I need to tell them. Yeah. You just smell it and then taste it. And that's how we start making associations. She's going to be a great whiskey ambassador. I'm excited about this. Yeah. yeah. Feeling it? Yeah. Yeah. Let's see what we get with a little, little bit of water on this. Okay. One. All right. Water me. Yeah. I, water I, me? I put a couple drops okay. in. Yep. More private. Ooh. Oh, I already drank it. That's okay. I like this one. I get more, just similar to the other one, I'm starting to get more of that kind of dry, dark chocolate thing. But this one's sweeter. Mm hmm Would you say? A little bit. And again, not, not nearly as spicy. No, but there's something that's, I like the spice a little bit sometimes, I think. Mm -hmm. I'm learning. I mm. like it. Very creamy. It's creamy. I think though, if I had to pick, I think I like the 1920. Do you? The spicier I, one? I think so. I think I, because the cherry flavor is a lot stronger and there's like that kind of cream to it. And I kind of like having a little hug. A little yeah. hug, you know. You deserve a hug every yeah. once, every in, a once in a while. And like, this one just gave me a pal. You're gonna be all right, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Keep sipping. Yeah, I think I like the nineteen. I like the nineteen twenty better. All right, go figure. It's the pro prohibition one. Yeah, right. So Maria's vote out of this, out of these two, is the uh, prohibition style nineteen twenty. Uh, I'm going to agree. I actually, if you, I think this bottled and bond is really good. It's a little bit flat. It's a little flatter than I expected. Like it, do, it doesn't have those. I feel like flat's a negative word. It's like a little flat. bit. It is a bit negative. Yeah. yeah, I felt a little. Yeah, I felt that. I mean, all in all, like I, I enjoy it. Like, when you say flat, though, describe flat. So I think that like there's a fine line between being flat and being balanced. I think this is a much the bottle and bond is a much more balanced whiskey, but I also find that it's a little bit like flat in the sense that the flavors seem a little muted. Like I get a lot of the just caramel vanilla, but the other stuff seems like it's not quite showing itself too much. And even with water, I didn't notice them. No, I didn't, it didn't bit. change much yeah. with the water. But you know, what's interesting is that when you're new to this is you're looking for that bold flavor first, right? Cause like, mm -hmm. you're like, oh, I know that. Yep. But so really when we, when you're saying it's flat, like, I don't even know if I'm like, I don't even know what those under notes are that I'm not even right, getting. Cause right? you're not really picking them up, right? Yeah. Like this, I think we picked up a lot more. Mm -hmm. Daniel asked me if I came from wine. I come from wine, but no, I don't work in wine in any way. I'm actually a child psychologist, guys. <laughs> um, so, but um, no, I just went into wine. I wanted to learn wine. My my good girlfriend um, took me wine tasting and we kind of kind of got into it. And I learned I don't really am a big fan of white wines. Um, and I'm even realizing that I like white wines in an oak barrel, which is kind of something I'm learning in the whiskey world, which I think I like that oaky taste mm -hmm. in the Scott. Yeah, all of them are oak. Okay, yeah, yeah they're all right. Like, yeah, yeah, like I kind of think I, that's a thing. So I am making some comparisons to like kind of like the flavors I pick up in wine, the flavors I kind of pick up here. Um, I think there's like um, an intimidation factor of like not like you're not picking up the right thing, right? right. Um, and so that was really nice learning when the guys had told us um, yet yeah, when we did the tasting, right? With the Willet, I really liked hearing about how they all gather around on a table and they go around. What do you got? What do you got? And it doesn't matter, right? Because it's your palate. And so I think that that gave me some security and like, I'm all right. Exactly. I taste what I taste. Exactly. Exactly. I taste exactly. what I taste. And sometimes <laughs> when people like pick up things that you don't, then you can, you know, when you go back and you start noticing them a little bit too. Which is well, yeah. Fun. So when you say them, I think for me, it's like, I'm so overwhelmed with like the flavors that I can't even think of a word. It's like, I know I'm 
tasting it. I know I'm feeling it, but I don't know the word. Yeah, I think that sounds right. Thank you. See, he said, way to go, Maria. Yeah, the 1920. So let's catch up on the chat. And then, um, so yeah, by the way, um, if you had to choose between the two, mm -hmm. the uh, Bottled and Bond is probably around a, I don't know, $50 bottle. This one's around 55 60 I still think the prohibition is probably worth 10 bucks more. What do you think? 10 bucks more? Oh, I'm so lost by the price of this. Like, it is wild. Yeah. This is about 60 Like, y'all pay some money. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. That's crazy. Like, I go through bottles of wine a night. I'm like, you can't do that with whiskey. No. Like, he gives me little saps. I'm like, okay. And so when you're not used to whiskey, you're drinking to taste it and to enjoy it, right? Because I think that's the difference. You have to enjoy yeah. it. Exactly. You just shoot it back. You think this is ten dollars? Would you pay ten more dollars for this one than that one? Because I like it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I would totally. too. So our votes for the Prohibition Edition. That's my. Um, I like it. Both are really good, though. I would yeah. say. Let me catch up on the chat right quick. See what yeah. folks are saying, and then uh, Maria is going to do these again, but blind. And so we're going to see if she picks out the same whiskey. Like, Daniel said, "Malted Maria reviews." There you go. See. It? Good idea. Just push them right off. True, guys. When I started 20 years ago, I was happy if I could pick out two or three flavors. And when visiting the Glen Margie distillery, we were told that the French perfumer noticed 28 different notes in a 10 year old. Damn. Yeah, that's different, different right? Notes. But I mean, you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. You know what that's, I, mean? I, I give him this eyebrow. Like, wait, hold on. <laughs> like, mm. Right. Maria said you were coming from mine. You were, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, you answered mm -hmm. that already. Says yeah, Mar way to go, Maria from Silverlock with the 1920. Mm -hmm. I like that She's one. She's right. Everyone else will agree to you. Yeah, totally, totally, totally. Um, you know what I am noticing hmm. while you search people um, is the whiskey world. I just want to say they're so much more friendlier and kinder about the tasting and figuring it out. Coming from like wine tasting, I just feel like wine, white wine, wine people, mm -hmm. right? They, there's a sumiac, sommeliers, sommeliers. Yeah, they're just a little bit bougier. They're a little bit like, you don't taste the cherry. Right, right. Right? right I'm like, right. I don't know. So I, I appreciate this, guys. You guys are so friendly about it because I'm, you know, figuring it out. Yeah, exactly. We love that. I never found 28 notes, but it was only a few years ago. Someone asked me, which was the record of different notes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's part of the journey, totally. Indy said, is flat and thin the same thing? Sort mm -hmm. of. I one. feel like flat... It's I think, not the same thing. Not I think, from what you were saying. Yeah, I feel like I feel like a lot of flat whiskeys are a bit thin. I just feel like it's when the flavors all seem like too muted, which to See, me says I think it that's was in the a, word. You need to use muted. Like the, the flavors are muted because when you say flat, it makes it seem like it loses like some sort of punch or some sort of sure, something. That's right. No, I, I think that's a good point. Yeah. I think I think what I would say is is like I'm thinking of a whiskey, for example, that I think has really muted flavor and not not muted because it's subtle. It's muted just because I think they were in bad, like crappy barrels. And that's like Glen Farkless 25, which I think is like one of those whiskeys you see. It's a 25 year old scotch. It's at a great price, but the flavor is just you don't get much out of it. And some people, I think, might mistake that because of it's it's complex and subtle, whereas I find that it's a combination of both very, very flat and also not a lot of subtlety. So like it doesn't really work. But yeah, I would say in general kind of a muted flavor, but I'd be curious like Greg or Silverlock, Daniel, anybody else mm. in the chat, like how you would describe when you when you drink a whiskey that you just feel like is kind of flat and boring. Beth Higgins said, give her the 1910, it's liquid candy. I wish I had a bottle of it because I think the 1910 oh. is is great. I I'm love candy. Fan. I'm lying, I don't like candy. Think of it as riding a train versus a roller coaster. What is more fun? The train. Thank you, Silver. <laughs> right? Okay. Like, I'm at an age where the roller coaster doesn't feel good anymore. I'm like, oh, there goes the neck. Right? You know what I mean? <laughs> it's not fun anymore. A great risky rolls over in the mouth and all sorts of deliciousness. Totally three dimensional. I agree with you, Jack. Yes. You did flavors on a big whiskey in the 1920s. Is a great way to explain it. That's why everyone loves it, but not everyone's favorite. Good point. Good See, point. I like muted. Yeah. I think that's the right way to say it. She would like some of Eric Waits' takes on whiskey, too. Oh, yeah, definitely. Wine is great training to work your nosing and senses. It's a good start to embrace whiskey, I believe. Yeah, Greg knows what's up. Thank you. Yes, Greg. I think I spent close to 300 a day and didn't plan on buying anything except groceries. <laughs> yeah, that's real, man. I know all about that. I mean, no, I'm, no, I, would, I could never imagine. You've seen a boxer two show up in my house today. 
I did. So I've never seen so much whiskey in my life. <laughs> and I come from like straight, like I drink beer, like I like beer. Um, so I went from beer to wine to everything else. But yeah, I've I'm I've like have tasted some like wild shit. It's yeah. very expensive, very rare. It's lovely. Yeah, it's been fun. Mike said the higher proofs make whiskey go farther than wine. Yeah, I agree with you on that. What does he mean by that? I, I oh, went just like, this like, to, like, to Mike uh, and I was like flavor wise. I think he's saying flavor wise. Mm. Yeah. It is oh, all yeah. subjective for sure. Thank you, Greg. I said the same thing. I'm like, it's not thin because you're talking about like the velocity, the velocity, viscosity, viscosity, mm -hmm. and you were doing this with it. That's that's whether or not it's thin, not flat. True. I got you. Good I got point. you, Greg. Good point, Greg. Good point, Maria. Indy, I hope that's that clarifies it. If uh, if I was being a little confusing about that. Um, all right. So what I got here is two glasses. Okay. I'm gonna have uh, Maria. I'm gonna have you. Uh, I'm gonna have you close your eyes for just okay. a second. Okay. And I'm gonna show you guys. I got two different dots on the bottom of these. Okay. So this one, if you all pick up that color, this is gonna be the 1920. This one, which is you see a little bit lighter. You see the difference. This is the uh, bottled and bond. So I'm gonna give these to Maria. You may I turn around. You may turn around, madam. And you have two glasses in front of you. You pick whichever one you'd like. Okay. Give it a taste. Give it a smell. Give it a taste. And then do the other one and tell us what you think. In the meantime, I'm going to pour myself a little bit more of this Prohibition Edition because it is damn delicious. If he hollers, let him go. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. All right. So what color is the sticker on the bottom of that? It's red. Is it red? Yeah. Let me see. That's like the purple red. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, me guys. That's red. That's It's red. Oh, yeah. yeah you're right. All right. So okay. Check that one out. Oh, I'm excited. I think I might know. Do you? Ooh. All right. Look, you, okay, so you guys have all been into whiskey for a while. So, like, think back for some of you. Oh, that's the orange one. A you few years, one. lots of years, right? When you first had your first whiskey sip. It's so exciting when you feel like you can actually appreciate the art that someone did. Mm. I think that's exciting. It's, for me, I'm excited because I'm like, I may be able to tell. And because it's not so strong... I want to say, I want to say it might be the bottled and bond. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, the yeah, 1887. Right. Yeah, the bottled and bond. Because it doesn't, I don't know. We got to taste it, though, because that's it. Yeah, give it a taste. And then if it doesn't give me a hug, I know who it is. <laughs> I know who it is. Yeah, you give those a taste and then let us know. What does it taste like, or what did you smell on that one? That's the cherry coke with the pepper, mm. with the cayenne in it. Okay. So you think that's the spicy one, the Prohibition Edition, maybe? But the nose, you thought maybe it was this one. You see what happens when you go blind, right? You don't know until you yeah, know. Yeah, I got excited. Okay, let me, let, me <laughs> pump, let me pump my break. Let me pump my break. Let me slow down. I just don't feel like it's as strong of smell compared to when I first did it, maybe. So now I'm kind of like, yeah, the smell got me a little. Mm -hmm. Okay. And for the record, these are very similar whiskeys. So it'll be interesting if you can tell. Delicious? Yes. Totally delicious. Yeah. I oh, like great. this one. But I know which one this is. Do you? I think I do because I think I like the other one better because there's less burn. There's less like the mm. heat. You said you liked this one better at first and that had the burn and the heat. Yeah. And now after spending time with the other one. Oh, you're flipping the script? I don't know. <laughs> do it. But this one's definitely spicier. It has the cherry and the Coke kind of vibes. A little vanilla. What's up, Ace? What else we got? Maria has better tasting notes than me already. I'm unsubscribing, says Mike Meyer. <laughs> there you go. And this Stick is my, around, Mike. It's fun. Yeah, no, and this is my absolute, like, I, I think, what, just the other day was my first tasting. Yeah. I'm, like, like I'm fresh, like green. Mm. 
It's the 1920. All right. So just so everybody knows, we'll have her taste the other one first. But the one she just did was that color, as you guys remember what I told you that one was. And you can go. Bye, Whiskey Ace. He was just swinging by to say hi. Oh, take it easy, Whiskey Ace. He's uh, he's cool. He's over in uh, Pittsburgh, so not far from here. I'm going to do a little palate cleanse, and you can try the other one. Okay. And I'm like half his weight, so we got to keep a little popcorn going. <laughs> That's another thing I learned. Like, so you taste so many, and you don't realize how much alcohol you're actually getting. That's true. No one told me that. Yeah. You didn't prepare me for that. You so held tonight, your own, though. Tonight I'm prepared. Yeah. Tonight tonight you know what's up. Okay. We're going to keep the water flowing. We're going to okay. keep the popcorn going. Okay. Let me say something. Clean my palate. Clean the palate. So... She's guessing that the first one she had was the 1920, but now we're going to I'm so this right. Way. I'm so right. Somebody knows I'm right. <laughs> we're going to see. Oh, thank you, Daniel. I'm very new. I don't know if I will come back, but I really am excited that you invited me tonight, by the way. Absolutely. Um, I feel very privileged because I've been trying to like kind of get into this world. I kind of think I want to have a little bit more of a distinguished taste. Mm -hmm. okay. you're, definitely, uh, you're definitely getting a good run at that tonight. So the second one. Well, rumor has it, by the way, that he may be in LA. I heard I, might, I heard that might happen. I heard. Somebody said something about that. Rumor has it. So if Mr. Malt, was it Malt Whiskey? Yeah. Malt Whiskey, you find yourself in LA, by all means, I'll taste more whiskey. <laughs> you don't give up free whiskey. <laughs> hmm. Uh-oh, see what I mean? Ah, that's so tricky, fuckers. <laughs> okay, um, what do we got? Shit, that is so tricky. It is, right? Because you don't, you don't realize the burn, like they both, so this one- you've been having more alcohol, so the burn's starting to go away. Right, I'm getting a little immune to the burn. Um, I have to say, guys, I think this one is, I mean, I mean, obviously, I thought the other one was 1920. This one oh, has to be. You can flip them back and forth. You make your final decision when you're ready. Greg said that it's cool with us. Apparently, you're by yourself. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. We're going to have to find him a little a little something, yeah. find, you know? I think, so. I think that's what you should do. You should have random new people taste whiskeys. Yeah, that would be fun. Right? We could just go out. Or you can keep having me. I'll drink whiskey all day, every day. I think so far so good, right, Joe? This might be a little pilot run of a continuing series. We'll see how that goes. Hmm. No, but this one still doesn't have as much cherry coke. Okay. You're saying okay. He's saying okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm agreeing. But hey, you're you, agreeing you with you me. Get. But what if I? You know what I mean? Well, you know you're, the difference, right? We're gonna find out. Obviously, you know which one is I which. know which one is okay. which, yeah. And so does everybody that was watching when I shared it. Okay. You look, at, 19... you look at this, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll, I'll keep figuring this you out. Keep, you keep doing your analysis. In the meantime... You, you do give our people some attention. I don't know. Malt and Maria, this really works for you. Hopefully, you guys are visiting each other. You'll do it again. Yeah. Uh, we may just do that. We'll see what happens. That would be fun. I don't think I have anything going on on Tuesday nights. No. Monday's well, a little better for me. Monday Malt is and a little better. Mondays. Stay tuned, y'all. Hit subscribe. That's you, fun. You may see say that. Say it at again. Some point. Say it again. Malt and Maria Mondays. Maybe that'll be what happens. Is that happen? We'll see. Okay. Perhaps that's what we're gonna do. I'm totally jumping on this whiskey wagon. Yeah, you are. Let's send you the website. Jack says I'm drinking two. $15 bottles of wine in an evening was maxing out the budget. $60 bottle of whiskey glass. That's true. No doubt about that. This cool too, Maria. Please come back if you enjoy it. Thank you. You can see Eric on his own every Tuesday. <laughs> this is true. This is true. So it's just you on Tuesday. I've watched him a couple times, but there's another guy that comes Yeah, in. when I go do the show with Telex Whiskey Tent. Okay. Yeah. Tasty Tuesdays. If you're not subscribed yet, by the way, hit subscribe. Then mm. you'll make sure you get the notifications. For my whiskey reviews, which drop every Friday, 
and Maria Maria Malt reviews. Malt and Maria. Who said that? I think it was Greg or Daniel, one of them. Yeah. Mike, maybe even. Malt and Maria Mondays, maybe. Yeah. That might um, be that might be something coming up. What did uh, Mayor Ma say? Meyer said, Meyer. if Maria starts a channel, you both can do combined live streams. That would be really fun. Thank you. Thank you. I, I'm a little intimidated because I feel like I'm not at, up to par yet, but like you guys have boosted my self esteem. So thank you. Mm. Um, so maybe, I don't know. This was so random. So like the fact that they think that maybe a this, joint show might right? just be the thing. Maybe. We'll find out. There's plenty of time. M&M Mondays. I could do M&M Mondays and then Tasty Tuesdays with Talix. I can't even. I love that shit. Gary. I love it. What's up, Gary? Hi, Gary. Thanks for stopping in, buddy. Tuesdays are better for me. Tuesdays are my Friday if it isn't. Oh, yeah, Tina, but I'll still watch. Wait, who can't? I feel you, Daniel. You can't be drinking on, like, the work night. I feel you. Maria's great. It's not about how much you experience, or experience you have about whiskey. It's about the journey and the exploration. Take your time and enjoy the ride. Thank you. I appreciate that. No, I'm glad he slowed me down, Donner, because I think that there is that intimidation factor. And so I feel the need to kind of be like, I don't know, maybe I do taste that. And it's like, no, I don't. I don't, I don't fucking taste that. Right. Fucking yeah. You know? Yeah. And so that's okay. And so eventually as I get more experience, I'll start to kind of like feel those other notes. Um, I will tell you guys, when I get back to LA, my first goal is to smell the spices and kind of smell and do this. So that's next step. I'm excited to do that. Mm. Cause then I can figure out what these other notes are that you pick up. You'll that start I noticing don't. some of the spice yeah. stuff for sure. I don't. Definitely. Definitely. Let me just make sure I'm caught up here. And oh, then yeah, we'll, you then we'll get your little final vote on this. Shit. Can't breed your report. Oh, you got one? So did I. Oh man, you're gonna have to tell me what you think. Uh, mine's, mine has not arrived yet, but I got to jump on that spring bank. Yeah, that's I had to do that. Maria doesn't seem intimidated at all. She's cool, and it helps having his his half aside. So yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Do it, do it on Saturday together. We could do a uh, Saturday sips with Maria and Mom. Oh, yeah. sassy Saturdays, guys. Sassy Saturdays. Oh, sassy Saturday, huh? She'll bring the sass. <laughs> I mean, I can't imagine you bringing so much sass to the whiskey. No, no, I don't bring too much. The thing about whiskey is, if you have the personality, if you have personality. And our honest people will watch. The community will help you out and be there for your journey. Daniel, thank you. Oh my yeah, gosh, this true. is so much better than the wine people. Wine people are a little cutthroat. I ain't gonna lie. I'm just gonna throw it out there. Yeah. Y'all know some wine people, they're a little cutthroat. Like you don't taste the raspberry notes. Yeah. Man, like that. Man. Yeah, this no, thank you crowd. guys. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Beth Higgins says, well put. Maher says that Maria, you're part of the gang now. I there you go. Yeah. This is my thank boy you. over in India. Cheers, ma'am. Yes. Oh, I've been to Chennai, India, by the way. I don't know I don't who know was where, that. Yeah. I don't know where Meyer lives in India, but we don't know where Meyer is, but I just want you to know. She's easy. Wine people suck, whiskey people forever, says Daniel. Thank you. I mean, yeah. I do love me some wine because you can drink more bottles of that. He gives me sips and then I'm cut off. And then you're like, what do you do for the rest of the night? <laughs> cut off. I don't think I've ever cut you off. No, actually. You You've actually it. held your own. I mean, we we had a, quite a few sips last night. Yeah, we? we did. We did. We did. I, I am in a, you we know, had some cast the drink. Navy taught me how to drink. She's a veteran, y'all. Yeah. And the Navy taught me how to drink. Yeah. Thank you, my fellow sailors. <laughs> All right, Maria. So what are you thinking here? You've had both okay, of these. Okay, okay. You drank them both blind. Feeling a little rushed. Oh, well, take okay, your time. Eric. By all, by all means. What, they, what do they call you? Oh, my channel's Malt Muser. So. Muser? I'm just, yeah. You're the Malt I'm Muser? Mu I'm Muse on Malts. Yeah. But do they call you Eric? Yeah, they, these folks know my name. Oh, okay. That's what I was wondering. I didn't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't got Eric, it. pump the bricks. Hold on. <laughs> you know what, guys? I'm not going to waver. Your first instinct is usually the right thing. Mm -hmm. So look at me. I have to itch my head. Oh. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to have to go that this one. The second one, which is the. By the way, these colors look really fucking similar. Yeah, they do. It sucks. So the second one is that one. The first one is the more orange one. No, do you guys. No, Mira. Hold on a second. Do you guys even see a fucking difference? I do. Yeah. The one in one. Yeah. I'd see a difference. I don't know. I One feel like you're trying to hoodwink me here. No, no hoodwink. Definitely not a hoodwink. Okay, so I think. Okay, no, well, now it's shit. Okay, so I think this one 
which is the magenta one, and that one is the orange one. Okay. Because to me, you guys, just so we're clear, it looks literally like the same color from here. <laughs> you see that? You see what I'm saying? Like, he making shit crazy. Like, look, yeah. they look the same to me. But I think this one is the 1897. And my first one was 1920. And now I'm nervous. So should we tell her? Again, she thinks this one, which is the like hot pink, was the 1920, and this orange, more orange one is the is the 1897. And drum roll, you are right. <gasps> I am. You got it right. Shut up. You got it. Fuck yeah. Well, yes, um, I you feel You definitely a picked it up, and you picked it up for all the same reasons. No shit. Yeah. I did for real. Yep, you did. You, you need right. to get different color stickers, bro. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that, I, feel, I feel like that was a little bit. Well, I was sure. right for real. Yeah, you were right. Um, she picked it up, so she got the nineteen ten. You guys, I think I'm a whiskey drinker. Thank you for welcoming me into the group. Yeah. Look at me. I'm just like getting closer. I feel like so excited now. I'm like I got this, guys. <laughs> Maria, Maria got it right, so she was able to pick it up even blind after not getting the description. So that's cool. So those were some fun ones. Thank you, Greg. I did good, right? <laughs> Thank you. I'm excited about it. Yeah, those are some fun. Oh, I kind of want to do another one. Do we have time to do another one? Oh, I don't definitely. know how this works. I'm very new to this. We definitely got oh, time to do another one. I'm getting another bottle. Okay. Do I need to like what? Like, do you need to? No. no. No, we don't even got to do that yet. Okay. I'm gonna think about. Are you guys hanging out for a little while? Because I want to taste a little oh, bit. They're more. hanging out. We got 23 folks in the chat. They're hanging out. Yeah, I'm gonna hang out a little bit longer. Let's do it. Yeah, a little bit. So I got it right. You got it right. Which means I'm figuring it out slowly. That's right. Okay. So. Okay. Oh, rinse me. We got to rinse. Yeah, rinse yourself out a little bit here. We do that with wine too. So the first thing. So I picked two other. I picked two other whiskeys. I think Maria might like. We'll see. We'll see. And these are. Um, these are both. Have a lot of bourbon cask influence, but they're Scotch. So. The first one we're gonna do is a Balvenie. This is the Sweet Toast of American Oak. And so we're gonna give uh, Maria a chance to try this one out because this is a Scotch, but it's gonna it's gonna it's an homage to uh, a lot of the bourbon flavors. Homage. homage. What the fuck is that? Well, homage. <laughs> That's a it's it's a, a a style in which it's trying to pay respect to. That's what that word means. Yeah. Oh, that sense. Has, oh, everybody, ever, has that. everybody ever done an homage to Maria? No, but I feel like somebody should. I feel like they should too. <laughs> I don't know new words Second to one we're gonna do. Oh, and it's 12, guys. You guys know 12. Good yeah. number. Daniel. Is it Daniel? Greg? One of y'all. Mm -hmm. Y'all know. That's a 12-year-old. And then we're going to do uh, Glen Goyne 25 or 12, which is, this is also mostly bourbon, but this is going to have a little sherry in it. So, you know what, guys? I found out that I think I like a little sherry mm -hmm. in my bourbon. Yeah. I'm, so I'm trying to figure out, like, every time I taste something, I'm like, why do I like this? Why do I like this? And so I have to really, like, it's, for me, it's like intense concentration. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm figuring it out. I think it's like, because it has a little bit, when they're in, when it tastes sherry, what, what barrel you're are they getting in? More, yeah, they're, they're in like ex-sherry barrels. So you're getting more of that fruit flavor. Yeah. Like the kind of dry fruit. Red I think fruit I'm a thing. fruity person. Yeah, I think you are too. I'm a little fruity. A little bit. A little bit. This is sad. So this one is, uh, I quite enjoy, I'm dropping a review of this in a couple of weeks, y'all. Um, mm. This is the, what is the name of this one again? The Balvenie, it's the Sweet Toast of American Oak, 12 years old. What's the alcohol by volume on this? Oh, um. Should be on the bottom somewhere. Maybe on the bottom itself. You can pull it out. Oh, there 43. You go. 43. I said it like it was a race. Did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> 43. This is a 43%. Okay. So this one's coming in pretty, pretty chill on the alcohol level. Oh, where is it? Good morning, Gary. Is it good morning? Oh, wait, somebody said, I thought somebody said good morning. I'm sorry. Some of our international friends, it might be a little bit early in the morning. Oh, Maher's probably heading out. Oh, Maher's in New Delhi. What's Rabbit and Red? Oh, that was whiskey. my old channel. That was my old, I was going to do horror films, but uh, you said it just turned into all whiskey. So Rabbit and Red was supposed to be horror films? Yeah, and now it's called Mount Music because I just decided to make it all about whiskey. Wow. Okay, I don't fuck with horror films. I don't. It's scary. No, I don't do none of that. She doesn't. I, you know what I mean? Like, why? This is it provoking anxiety for no reason. Life scary enough. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know what I'm gonna see when I go outside my door anymore. Should be wild out there, right, people? Yeah. It's wild out there. So it's no, true. we don't need no scary movies. Life right now is scary. Fair enough. 
So yeah, we're gonna do this one. Um, let us know in the chat. Oh, I like no, I'm reading. Um, okay, so yeah, it was a rough trip. Our, our our ship pulled in, and we ended up being stuck on Chennai because we couldn't get back out to our aircraft carrier. So. And this is when you were in the navy. Yeah, yeah, it was my last port. Actually, it was really rough. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, shit. It sounds like fun though. I mean, at least you no, got to yeah, go to for a little while. And yeah, I loved it. I mean, I loved all of it. Yeah. And you know what? I, I even, I think you actually, I'm going to take it back. You know how I know I'm meant to be in this group hmm. with y'all? Is because I was always drinking like Jack and Cokes. The old Jack and Coke. The Jack and Coke. Yeah. Jack and Coke. You know what I mean? So I knew that I was kind of like, you know, when Got you're a like. A little taste of the. There was something that, that I wanted. Yeah. yeah. And then old fashioned is my down, like hands down favorite drink. And yeah. that has something to say. It does. Yeah. I agree. I'm meant to be here, guys. She's meant to be here. You heard it here first. So uh, let's see what else is going on in the chat. Uh, okay, Greg. He's got to go soon. It's late doing? there. Greg, yeah. I feel you. But Greg, I want to thank you, by the way. Thank you very much for building my self-esteem because I was very like intimidated, self-conscious about this. Um, you know, all the notes people smell and taste. I'm just kind of like, eh. It's true. Greg, appreciate you, buddy. Thank you. Big one, what's up? And ECB, yeah, I should pour you some ECB B520. That's a great pour. If you're enjoying that tonight, enjoy that. I actually happen to have a bottle of it. ECBP B520. Yeah. That sounds like some crazy ass shit. Elijah Craig, it's barrel proof. What is that? Uh, it's similar to the old Forester in the alcohol by volume, but it's it's a whole nother animal. We'll, we'll see, big one. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. We might get into it. I hope you're enjoying it, though. We hung out for three to five hours with your boy last week, and she she did. Uh, they did. I did do a little. I did do a protracted show last week. Oh, you fun. did? Yeah, that was fun. I was drinking was... some Indian whiskey. Oh, okay. Andrew Page, what's up, buddy? Hi. Andrew Page is a good friend of ours. Hi, He's Andrew. Good, good support of the show over. I'm uh, new. Just across the Delaware in New Jersey. Woo woo. Hanging out. Dirty Jersey. Yeah, I gotta love it. And everybody's uh, no problem, Marie. I'm staying around for twenty minutes more. So says Greg. Yeah, Greg, stay a little longer. I'm going to taste one more, and then I want to see what your input is. Let's do it. Okay. Let's do it real quick. Greg, I'll go to bed. All right. We don't want to keep them up too late in Paris. No. So um, continuing, we're, I basically tried to pick two whiskeys that are kind of transitional from, from sipping some bourbons into uh, sipping some scotches. Okay. And what we got here is from the Balvenie, uh, mm -hmm. really great distillery. Personally, it had, they have my favorite looking bottle. Really? Yeah, shape wise. I mean, that is just, I love the shape of this bottle. I love their labels. It's nice and clean. It I don't really feel nice. like it's unique. It looks great. I love the way the Balvany bottles look. For those who can't see it, like, I got a little, little loop de loop, yeah. little, little hips right here. Yep. And it's got the lip on top, lips and hips. Lips and hips, a little booty <laughs> on the bottom. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Can I smell? Go for it. So, this is the Sweet Toast of American yeah, Oak. It's a 12 year old Balvany, uh, 43%. And um, I quite enjoyed it. I'm going to be dropping a review of this in a couple of weeks. And so this I, is what you're reviewing. Yeah, I got one coming up relatively soon. And I put some of this in the glass for you so we can uh, taste it together. And you can tell me what you think, because we were just talking about bourbon. And I think for something for somebody who's a big bourbon fan, I think this is a single malt scotch that will appeal to a lot of bourbon drinkers. And so while you're both kind of bourbon and scotch, drinker, you know, I, know, I don't know. I don't even know what I am. Yeah, no, you just enjoy whiskey. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we're going to have a little bit of whiskey tonight. This is a okay. scotch whiskey, single malt. And you tell me what you think about the nose on this one. Totally different, right? But yet yeah, has some of those similar qualities. No, I'm, I, so there's like a hint of cherry because for some reason cherry is just easier for my nose to pick up for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. But there's something else that I don't think I've like, Corn? What am I? Mm, what is this? Definitely not corn. It's one hundred percent malted barley. So there's so no barley. Corn. Okay. But what's that sweetness I'm I'm picking up on then? So for me, I'm getting apples. Is it apples? I'm getting a lot of apple. I'm getting pear. I could see pear. pear it's really sure. actually unique, but I think pear because pear is very different than apple. And the other things I get off this, and this is where I think this whiskey is actually really unique for better. Or you worse. gotta get coffee beans. Yeah, we should get some of those soon. Yeah, because I feel like I gotta. You know what else I get off this? Vin it, uh, 
pancakes with butter pancakes with maple syrup. See, this is the kind of sh this is it where I'm like, okay, buddy, okay, you ever it's had, not a fucking you, pot roast. Have you ever had? You've had Belgian yeah, waffles here. before, right? I mean, yes. That's what that's what I think is so unique. Is, or like graham crackers. Yeah, but the fact that you can recall so yeah, I make me, that so quickly. I make that association real quick with this. One. Okay. I'm just saying. There's a lot of that going on here. Oh, pot rolls with some celery. Yeah, you know, a little motor oil. <laughs> There's a lot of that going on in this one. Mmm, sweet. It's a, but the apple thing, like caramel apples. Yeah, I do see the caramel. I do the. I see the caramel, guys. For sure. I smell. I smell the caramel. Can I taste it now? Let's do it. Okay. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Different. Yeah, it's different. It's not my favorite. No. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have the heavier caramel notes, or what do you think? What are you getting off this? Chocolate? Definitely. I get so excited when I get something right. It's <laughs> chocolate, right? I feel chocolatey. And I don't actually I'm not a fan of chocolate, so it would make sense that if this is chocolate heavy, I wouldn't. Be a fan. There's definitely chocolate. I still get the maple syrup thing. I do. You know what I'm saying? But it's after for me. Yeah. Oh, like on the finish? Yeah. It's in the finish. Yeah. No. You're getting it like it's hanging around. It's a little bit lighter. Obviously, mm -hmm. it doesn't have the like heavy corn note. Mm. There's also like a nice kind of, um, you remember those candies like butterscotch or like Werther's? Those Werther's. Oh, chocolate? my grandma ate those. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's grandma has the Werther's. I love those. Yeah. No, but I can't even. No, it's not Werther's. It's the butterscotch thingy. It's the one with the red wrapper. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of that going on. Okay. So, see, this is why I need my own channel because I want to tell them that when you say butterscotch, we think immediately for non whiskey people, sweet. Butterscotch, mm -hmm. sweet. Agreed. But if you take sugar out of butterscotch, you're left with a little bit of that nuttiness Agreed. that really makes butterscotch, that, that creaminess of the butter. Mm -hmm. Right, so you're not getting the sweet, but you're getting all of the butter and that nutty kind of flavor. Versus, you pick up any nuttiness in this? Well, when you said butterscotch, I felt like mm. you know, so, uh, more like a candy. Mm -mm. This is a really sweet whiskey, I find really, really sweet. It's got a little bit of a what's in my favorite? No, no, interesting. Why didn't I like that? I don't know. What do you think's missing from it compared to those bourbons that you had? Yeah, I like my bourbon. You did. I you think did. I'm a bourbon girl. You did like the bourbon. Um, what do you think's missing from this one? So it's dry. No, no it's all 100% malted barley. It's a single malt. Barley, barley. So it's scotch. That's what I'm having a hard time with is separating all of the groups. Yeah. So hold on. So we have single malt scotch. One, I got your thing. One dispensary. No, maybe not. No dispensary. One dispensary. <laughs> <laughs> we are not in Los Angeles. <laughs> one dispensary, she says. But uh, uh, conceptually, that's like basically. Okay, accurate. one distillery. My bad, peeps. One distillery and one barrel. Um, no, not wait. one barrel. All bar barley. Mm -hmm. All barley. Okay. 100% bolted barley. Okay. And this one is. Would you say this one was? Okay, so this one. It's a single malt scotch. It's the same thing, right? Yep, we're drinking a single malt scotch. So then why is this one tasting different than the because other one? Because bourbon is has to be 51% corn. Right, so no, you, you told me the that. Recipe, so this is 100% malt and barley. So the oh, grain, this is 100%. Yeah, any single malt is 100% malt and barley. So the grain mm. that's actually used, the cereals used to actually make the spirit. Yeah. Are completely different now this has definitely been aged in bourbon barrels which is why you're getting some of those bourbon notes and when you say bourbon notes which notes did i say that were bourbon see like that's the difference too right like he's like oh those bourbon notes you noticed mm. so caramel vanilla yes toffee yes yes, yes, um, yes. i a can little say bit that of oak spice those are some classic bourbon notes and I think you, on this one, I get a little bit of the toffee and a little bit of the sweetness, the butterscotch thing, right? It's all those kind of tones. So. Oh, my gosh. Thank you, Mike. Mm. 
Thank you. He said, I nailed the butterscotch explanation, which by the way, Mike, I have a habit of just like saying shit with no back like force. That was all Maria explanation right there. I have no idea if that's even fast. Who's talking a master blender or Maria? Amazing about the butterscotch. See, there you go. You, you, you uh, laid some info out. I actually did not know that about butterscotch. So thank you for sharing. Well, I just felt like, you know, you keep saying butterscotch and I'm like, people think like, well, and again, that's the difference, right? Cause he's talking to people that have done this and mm -hmm. you invited somebody on here who drinks like hard, like I love me some IPAs, you know what I'm saying? Like I love me some beer. And then I transitioned to wine, which I do the Syrahs and blended a little Pinot mm -hmm. in case, you know, they want to mail you some wine by all means. Please do. Um, Hit me up, Malta but, Gmail. So when you say butterscotch, it's like you have to remember to take that kind of sugar part out and just mm -hmm. what does the butter part taste like, which is, I think, sometimes a little nutty, a little bit kind of like that caramely burnt kind of feel. I kind of agree with you. Like caramelized sugar? Well, a little bit. Sands the sugar. It's like just like the, like kind of like molasses. You know, it's making me want to look up what butterscotch is made of. Now, do you pick up anything like, um, like I said, I, I think this is really dominated by the vanilla and the brown sugar, or the, uh, the but like, do you think, do you find this buttery is what I'm saying? And by the way, Maher, uh, we might just have to do that tonight. So. What is, what is that? Wait, 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 wait. Okay. What's, how do you say his name? Maher. Maher. Mira. So he's from India, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Remember that part. I knew you were from India. Um, we're three M's right now. So when it's peated, it means that it was in the barrels that were already burnt. Mm -mm. No, that's non-peated. Mm -mm. Where does where the smoky part come the, from? The smoky part comes from the uh, they burn peat to dry the barley. And that's where it gets the smokiness. And that's the PD. The yep. PD. The PD. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we did a little Lagavulin 12 the other night, and Maher brings up a good point. Maybe tonight I'll just, uh, we'll, we'll drink another one just, just for the I do want to make sure we say bye to Greg, because he was great. He, thank you so much for helping me and, like, building my self-esteem. I feel very part of the group now. Mike. I'm into it. Cheers. Appreciate that, man. Yeah. Love me the Oogie. Equal opportunity drinker. That's good. <laughs> All right, what, what else mean? is going on? Yeah, so yeah, maybe we'll uh, after we do the Glen going 12, maybe we'll um, we'll go for an Octomar or something like that. Let's see what Maria, let's see how Maria reacts to it. Okay, well, I just sent a message you're not from Canada. I thought you were okay. Hmm. So, what else is going on? Greg, I'll Greg, you the homie. I'm gonna fist pump that right there. There you go. He made me feel real, and yeah, because you never know, it's it's kind of tricky. <laughs> he needs to find himself a good mocker. I didn't know I was a mock girl, but I'm just saying. Right? Boomer has They it. exist. Mm -hmm. They exist. Maria nailed the butterscotch explanation. There you go. Cheers, Mike. He said, check the comments. Yeah, sorry about that. We were going a little slow. Right, Greg? Right? You got Sneers something to do. Sneerson's in the house talking about Oogie. What's up, Sneerson? It's been a while, buddy. Cheers, man. Happy 2021. I'm not sure if I've seen you since then. Good to have you in the house. We got 20 folks in here. Maybe Maria would like Oogie. I Maybe we should drink some oogie tonight. What is oogie? You want a, you want a little curveball? I don't know. Do I? Don't be fucking on my stomach, people. Let us know in the chat. Give us uh, give us give us a, a yes if uh, Maria should should, should taste some Arbeg Oogadal tonight. Maybe that's what we'll do. Y'all be nice. I've been so I've been talking about how great you are. <laughs> like you're better than my wine people. My wine people, they're a little. You know what I mean, they're a little bougie. Mm -hmm. A little serious. That's what we heard, right? Yeah. We don't want to deal with that. No. So we'll see what people have to say. But in the meantime, uh, I do have a review of this one coming out soon, probably in about one or two weeks. Mm. Should they check it out? No, they should for sure check it out. Yeah. I wasn't a huge fan. She's not a huge fan of the Balvenie sweet taste of um, uh, sweet toast of American oak. Mm -hmm. I I like it, but I recommend reading the review, even if you. Don't give a shit because at least it helps you kind of pick up what you might be tasting. And I think that's yeah. what's helpful for me. That's true. You know, when, when you're like, oh, what do you taste? And I'm like, I'm eh, drawing a blank. Yeah. You'll throw out cinnamon and then I'll go, no, I don't see cinnamon. You throw out caramel, there it is. So reading in the review could be helpful. I agree. Mm -hmm. So Maria, not huge on the Balvenie Sweet Toast of American mm -hmm. Oak. I am new. I'm, 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 I like it. I don't think it's the best thing ever, but I like it. Um, oh, Silver said a, I should try Oogie, too. Yeah, I do see some some uh, stuff coming in for the Oogs. You know what's funny? Because when I see Oogie, I think of this Italian restaurant, <laughs> like this like a generic uh, Everybody's going to pour Oogie. Chain. No way. 
Yes, for Ugi, you're definitely going to love it. Greg's the only one saying, don't start by that. Break. It's too hard. Be kind. Let her check Kalila. Thank Tolbert. you, Greg. I don't See, have like somebody's Tolbert. looking out for me. Yeah, Greg's looking out for you, but I think we're going to go trial by fire tonight. I got you. Thank you, Greg. Trial uh, by I wish fire. I, I would, yeah, I mean, we're going to, we're basically <laughs> going to throw you in the deep end of the pool. So, I mean, I'm not, a, I mean, I'm a good swimmer, actually. I'm like, All right, well, we're going to test that theory. Uh, I wish I had one open, and I know that you probably got one, Number and that's four, awesome. Yeah, yeah the okay. McAllen 4, that was the, the best of the edition series in my in my mind. All right. Yeah, Capel said it the same. Is that how you say that? Uh, by the way, if you all haven't noticed, my vocabulary, mm, a little questionable. It's the, Puerto Rican, it's the Puerto Rican thing, right? Yeah, I don't know. I just kind of like blend words and add <laughs> words. I make up words. He I got a doctor. It doesn't matter. He says these are definitely going to love it. Definitely going to love it. So can you guys tell me, actually, what do you use, if any of you do tastings, what do you use to clear your palate? Because I'm doing a little popcorn, and I'm not sure if that's actually the right thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just fucking eating because I'm, like, 120 wet. So what do you guys eat? What do you guys do to, like, kind of clear your palate when you want to switch over to different, like, liquors? That's a good question. It is. Because I don't know. You ain't got I nothing here. I lean heavily on the water. I mean, water, but like you could also use like a um, like saltine cracker. It's a good way to dry things out. Saltine cracker, something bland, right? Yeah. Water. Popcorn's not bad. Cheese and nuts. Oh my god, I love cheese. Lost cause. What's uh -huh. up? Lost cause is down in the bayou near uh, New Orleans. Hey, New Orleans. Good time. Good time in New Orleans. Peter White goes with dark chocolate. Okay. Yeah, I don't I like dark chocolate. I have to be honest. I don't even like chocolate, and then like to eat dark chocolate it's a hard one it's like chocolate without the sweet a lot of people yeah. Yeah, say oyster crackers and water those are good combinations Ooh, oysters mike daniel says mike uh, mike wants you to eat some oysters i see you mike no it's crackers oyster crackers oh no there's a little i got excited <laughs> we're just gonna we're gonna I just like just gonna go, go get us a dozen mike's like you need to get you a dozen some, oysters got some crackers welcome to uh what malt and maria's uh sunday or saturday sips <laughs> and shucking session where we're gonna do some oyster shucking you know what I mean? it could be go, fun just go totally in the left field on it okay light crackers can make it too not too yeah. salted exactly and i think i'm wondering greg if um the popcorn with the salt does kind of like add to me not tasting things that I maybe could, right? So it kind of can overpower your palate. That's true. Yeah. So I'm going to clean this glass out a little bit, and then yeah. uh, we're going to go on to our, our next pour when you're ready. And then after this one, so again, I selected two single malts that I think will be uh, palate pleasers for me. Oh my gosh, look at this guy. He's going to go get us some oysters. He's like his... I mean, hello, Grandpa and Dad both have an oyster farm. Are you reading your comments? No, I didn't even catch up on that one. I mean, when you see free oysters, you know what I'm You got to look at your comments, homie. Look at it. Yo. Yeah. Maybe we got to go down to NOLA and hang out with Los Oh, Cots. you have no... I love me some New Orleans. Is that New Orleans, right? You said NOLA? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just know that I went and I just... I fell in love and I need to come back. So, yes. Mm. I will come get you, come get some oysters from you. Let me move your chair with this a little bit. All right. Bye, Greg. Good night. Thank you so much. <laughs> Greg, it's been good hanging out. Cheers, buddy. Yeah, oysters would go pretty good. Dried cherries with sherry scotch or bourbon says Ooh. Lost Cause. Yeah. <laughs> King Chopri hates. <laughs> I don't hate you at all, my friend. Not in the least. Waste of your palate and smell of your own skin can neutralize the smell. Well, I smell good. You do. She does. She does speak of truth. Post COVID, it'll be a great place to be. Yeah, for real. You what know, happened? Maybe we should think about that. A little Nola action. Yeah. Would you? Would you be okay coming and being you're, a guest? You're you're not far from there, right? I I know that you're in the Bayou. I can't remember the exact city you're in. Yeah, we could go do the little oh, whiskey tasting. I love tasting. New Orleans. Are you kidding me? Mm. Oh, yeah. Oysters and Island. Mm. You know what's up. New Orleans knows what's up. I agree. Mm. They're great people, great food, great energy. It's just like totally where Maria should be. It's just like everybody's just ready to bust a little move. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's lovely. New Orleans, you got to go. I've been there once, but not with you. So maybe Oh, and that's why you. he said that because he pays attention. Mira, this Oyster Island, he was saying. He said that that's oh, it's connected. Isla. 
I like, yeah, but he was saying like there's oysters yeah. there apparently. Uh, they're probably there. And he's at the airport in, in between the city, so. Yeah. All right. So the second single malt scotch that I got lined up for Maria is also 12 years old because I'm rolling with the 12s. Thank you. Um, Maria, again, for the record, just in case y'all are just joining, do us, a, do us a favor before we even keep going. Hit that thumbs up. Give us some love. We appreciate that. Um, this is a little pilot run of a potential Malta Maria show. So we just found this out, though, like 10 minutes ago. We did. Because so. I was just coming to just kind of see what's going on. What's yeah, going on I over mean, here in the Arab world? Yeah, we'll see what's going on, right? Uh, we may end up having a, a, a little extra program on the, sh on the channel eventually. But uh, Maria and I have been sipping some whiskeys over the last couple of days. Uh, the favorite that she found so far is the Glendronic 15 Revival. And we'll be getting into a little bit of that. But she's been a bourbon drinker. So we were talking when we first started the show. You were talking about some of the bourbons that you were drinking. Mm -hmm. And you were you started with the with the bullet. You were putting it in your cocktails. Yeah, so I did bullet. I really liked I, my favorite drink is old fashioned. And that's already I already knew. Like I was like, I got a taste for something. Mm -hmm. um, and so then when you take out the sugar, and I just kind of kept the cherry. <laughs> And then I took out the cherry and then I just had, you know, the bourbon. And then I was kind of like, and then I think I was like, oh, maybe try it with no ice. Yeah. Um, and then from there, I moved into turkey, 101 turkey. Yeah. Um, and I did not taste the same thing you did. The cotton candy? Yeah. I don't even know cotton candy. I can't even, I haven't picked that up yet in anything. So um, I think it just matters if you're like palates maturing. Right. I mean, is that a thing? I just made like, that up in your pellets with cherry. Yeah. Eventually you'll land at cotton candy. Yeah. But you got the cherry notes, which is I think the most yeah. important thing on that, right? But I also think cherry notes are kind of like noticeable. Yeah. Well, I mean, at least you're um, noticing them. So I went to 101 Turkey, and then from there, then he's been introducing me to like different stuff. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so she's got the palette for the bourbon, which is great. And so the next one that I got here, and, and, and since you love the mm. Glendronic, the one that I have here is the Glen Goyne 12 years old. This is also a single malt scotch, 43%. Thank you, Donner. Yeah, there Don't you go. Don't you be worried about me. Thank you, Donner. <laughs> they be, you know what I'm saying? I'm they should my self-esteem. I'm not worried about I you. I got this. So this one, which I think you're really going to like, 43%. Um, this one is aged in bourbon, but okay. also uh, has uh, some sherry in it as well. So I do like a little sherry. I ain't going to lie. I've been figuring yeah, that this out. This is bourbon and sherry cask in one. Right. I do like, I think I do like those, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because you I mean you were loving that Glendronic. So I think this is one that's going to be a good like uh, bridge between. <laughs> Thanks, Greg Whiskey. The sherry and the scotch. Oh, that, you had water in that, didn't you? Um, I sure did. Oh, so you want to yeah. take that down? Or yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. We'll just put it over there for now. <laughs> okay. We'll just move that. And look at this. You're even going to drink it out of a Glen Glen glass. How freaking meta is that? So I have to say, you guys have to make friends with them. You got to like, you got to subscribe, whatever you got to do. Because if he invites you on, you get to be Maria. And then you get to taste all this fucking whiskey for like free. Do you know the whiskey this man has? So every time I taste something, I always go, why do I like it? <laughs> I make him tell me, why do I like this? Mm -hmm. It's hitting, hitting right. So you're saying I'm going to like this one. I am because we were drinking some sherry whiskeys earlier this week. And they even put the distillery manager on there. Mm, I know they're fancy. Oh, right? fancy! And so this one has got aged in both sherry and bourbon. So this is a scotch, and it's going to give okay. you a little bit of both of those flavors potentially. Okay. So we're going to see uh, if this is something you mess with. Okay. All right. All right. Nose first. Nose first. Okay. I don't like the way it smells. <laughs> She immediately says no on the nose. I get the dried fruits. Do you get the dry like red fruits? Daniel asked you a question. Oh, I missed it. Yeah, exactly. It's completely meta. What does that mean? Oh, it's like it's self-referential. So like it's mm. it's meta in the sense that like it's it's uh good night, Greg. He's going to sleep. Thank you. Greg. I look forward to seeing you again, Greg. Stay safe, be well, Greg. Enjoy your uh, evening in Paris. Yes. You so, know, I was supposed to go to Paris in April. I know. I, I know, know COVID ruined life. It did, didn't it? So what do you think about this one? No, it's all barley. Why do I? What would then? What am I smelling when I pick that up? Because I've the done sweetness? it twice now. No, I right. Is that what I'm picking up? Is like when I think I smell corn. I'm, what is? What else smells similar to corn that I keep picking up? Um, I mean, I'm not sure. There's like a sweetness to it. There's there like, is a, a like there's like um. So on this one, I again get the apples. You get the apples. You get the apple orchard thing on this. 
there's some dry fruits like like a fruit cake. And then there's that's also, what it is. I feel like there's like some cranberry or something. Yes, right. Cranberry. Thank exactly. you. High five me. Yeah, yes. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. But there's also a little bit of those bourbon notes. I but I also eat cranberries. You see how I knew what cranberries smelled like. Yeah, see, you know that's, what's up. I think that makes a difference. You gotta you know, know what up. shit smells like in order to pick it up. Real talk. So I get the uh I also get coconut on this. There's like a hell of a lot of coconut on this. Hmm. Greg has adopted me. I don't know. You mm. got coconut. See, that's something mm. I wouldn't, I don't think I'm. Mm. No, and I love coconut, so I feel like I would get that. I got it on the nose. I still get it on the on the palate too, on the taste. There's a bit of coconut. It's drying. It's got some of that Christmas spice, the fruit cake. It's also juicy, like juicy fruit gum. Uh, what does Big One say? I don't know. I might have missed it. I know. I feel like I need to get my glasses. Am I allowed to get my so glasses? Maria, when you bring Mal to LA, be sure to take him to Seven Grand on Seventh and Downtown. Great selection. Oh, I will. Thank you. Because I actually don't go out much in LA. So if you guys do have recommendations when our Mister ends up showing up, I would love to take him somewhere. I know that there's is a place in LA that does like Scotch and whiskey tasting called The Lost. Oh, okay. Possibly. Yeah, sounds like big ones out there. I do have a couple folks in here uh, that are. How in LA. fun! If you come out in LA, how fun! We could we could do a little uh, live tasting show at, at Spa. Why not? Why not? Nothing stopping us. No, but COVID. But COVID. But. <laughs> you like how I put a hard stop to that? <laughs> but COVID. So I'm gonna tell you something that I I pick up on the nose on this okay, that okay. you might think is interesting. It's focus. a little bit like rum. I can see that. There's a little rum very sweet. because it's that cherry note where you're getting the fruit, which is like, you know, rum is always really sweet. You get some of that dry right. fruit, but then you get the classic bourbon notes too, where there's like a bit of that caramel, there's a bit of the butterscotch, a bit of the toffee. A lot happening in this. I see the toffee. Yeah. There's a lot going on in this. This is also only 43%. I think this is a really good Glen going, by the way. We'll see what Maria's Maria's take on it is. Cilantro. Cilantro. Mm. Subtle, but but sticky, and oily. Nice little drying red fruit thing at the end, almost like a red wine, but the, it's like a red wine that had chocolate on it, like a chocolate covered. Uh, what are those things called? The like a chocolate covered cherry. Oh, those are good. Mm -hmm. Dark chocolate. There's a nice ginger in this. So I feel like a little bit of the fire could be from the ginger. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. You think it's got a little spice on you? For me. Yeah. A little bit longer finish than that balvenie. Right? It kind of lingers a little bit. Yeah. It makes my mouth water. Yeah. So that's what I'm noticing. When it lingers, that means your mouth should still be like sal como se dice, salivating. What's how you say it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean like the... Salivating. Sal uh, yeah, salivating. It's salivating, yeah. 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 Kind of nice, yeah. right? Hmm. Yeah. I think I can do it. Yeah. Maybe. There's a little there's a little bit of everything going on in this, I think. This is by the way, Glen this Glen going uh 12 is like what is this? This is probably like a $40 bottle, $45. I think it's great, great for the price. I'm gonna do a review of this soon too. Um, I really, really enjoy this one. Hmm. It's just it's like it's easy drinking and but it has a lot of complexity. That's the way I'm feeling about it. So what I'm figuring out is I don't know if I like scotch. <laughs> is that what it is? Are we figuring it out? I feel like I maybe I don't like scotch. So the thing that you're getting that you don't like, do you think you can describe it? Um so it's sharp for me. Sharp. Like kind of bitter? Yeah, like it kind of gets me quick on like the back of the tongue. Mm -hmm. And then it feels like it lingers a little bit where I want to go like this. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Right? Yeah. So it's a little spicy. Caramely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. From the bourbon cask for sure. But I can't say, yeah, that one was hard for me. That one was hard. Interesting. Looks like I've struck out on the scotches, y'all. Yeah, I don't know. But then again, but I know she what loves they are this now. scotch. 
So I do like that one. We will get into that a little. Then bit. what's the difference of why I like that one and not other ones? So the so here's here's one. So the difference between these two, this is X Bourbon and yeah. X Oloroso Sherry, the Glen Going Twelve. Whereas the Glendronic, it is three years older, and this is all Sherry and Pedro Jimenez. So it's all Oloroso and Pedro Jimenez Sherry. So this has no bourbon notes in it whatsoever. Huh. Whereas really? that one, and I really like that, don't yeah, I? You do. Yeah. You were digging it. It's so confusing. There's so many like different dynamics and layers that come into play that right? I can't I can't quite put my finger on what I want. So that's what she said. Like cordials, cherry cordials. Oh yeah. Donner passed it at uh, Malt Muser. Oh, I missed it. Sorry about that. Yeah, no, I know. I love. I, oh, I love I, that place. It's over dude, in West Hollywood. Yep, K and L is like. I love K and L. Are you kidding me? That's where you go when you go camping. You got to make sure you pick up all your stuff. So, by the way, guys, so. can I tell them something? So, I first started drinking any type of liquor, like dark, like this, um, camping, because it keeps you warm, right? So, you guys were talking about that Kentucky hug. I didn't know it was a hug because at the time it was just, you know, a, a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but that's how I started drinking like whiskey and scotches and things like that was when I camped at the, you know, you're on the fire. It keeps you warm. Yeah. You can't carry a lot when you're hiking in. So I believe on Thanksgiving we were drinking some whiskey by a fire, weren't we? Maker's yes. Mark? Maker's Mark. Yeah. Cast and Mark. I don't really, and that's not my, well, I haven't had the cast. You had the right, you had the cast strength. You haven't had the regular Maker's Mark. Right. And that was like the sweet muted one, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We had a little. Uh, oh, Andrew, good night. We had a little thing. Oh, they said good night to Greg. No, it wasn't us. Just kidding. Oh, okay. This is very exciting for me. Like, you know, it's a very We're different world. Fun. Let's see what else we got going on. Yeah, I can't. I'm gonna grab my glasses. I have to. Can I? Yeah. <laughs> So I don't know. Uh, Maria's a little lukewarm on the Glen going a little lukewarm on the Balvenie. Um, I'm uh, a little surprised, but at the same time, not. So I think when it comes to the sherries, Maria is much more into the, or scotch is much more into the heavily sherried, full sherried whiskeys and the bourbons. Well, they're just bourbons. But uh, I did, uh, I did uh, heed you guys warning or well, advice, and I do think we're going to uh, pour Maria some uh, some uh, Ugadal tonight. We're going to see what happens with the Ugi. Mount Muser plus GF. Daniel, then Demon Hunter. It's nice to see you, man. Thank you for swinging in. We've been sipping some bourbon um, with my comrade in arms, the wonderful Maria. Um, this has been a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, we're about an hour and a half in and 19 folks in, so we're going to still keep going. So we're going to do something heavily peated. She was a big fan of the Old Foresters. Not so much the uh, the Glengoyne 12, which, by the way, I'm a huge fan of. Glengoyne is an interesting one. I really don't like the 10. I really don't like the 15 or the 18. I think it's really under or overrated. Uh, but the 12 and the 15 are really, really damn good. Um and so I'll be doing a review of this one relatively soon. And it looks like Maria is back. We were just talking a little bit. Ben Demon Hunter up in Calgary is in the house. Ben's a man. Hi, Ben. Silverlock yeah, says single. scotch has a much wider range of flavors compared to bourbon. Liking one scotch doesn't mean you will like the other. You don't like the other. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's very right. Because I'm kind of getting a little confused. I'm like, do I like scotch? Do I not like scotch? Right. And then there's scotch. some stuff. Exactly. Mars says, um, says, Maria, you're really good at this. I still can't believe you're a beginner. I really am. I know, right? Like, I actually, I was just telling him, I was like, I kind of feel, like, excited. Because, like, when he says, like, oh, you're getting it right now, it makes me feel really, really um, brand She is. Daniel says, give her, give her the abuna. So we did do a little abuna. now. Maybe we'll do some tonight, too. We'll see how we all up. I, yeah, man. I hope everybody's weekend's going well. Thanks for everybody yes. for coming in. We got 19 folks in. We're an hour and a half into the show. I appreciate that. It's fun. Appreciate y'all for uh, hanging out here on uh, Malta Maria Saturday, sassy sipping mm -hmm. scotches. And yeah, whatnots. yeah. You went with sipping Saturday, but I think you know if I come back, you got to name it Sassy Saturdays. Sassy Saturdays with Maria. Sassy Saturdays. I think we could do that, right? Well, maybe we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see what, we'll see where things go. 
Also green spot tonight. Damn, Daniel, you're not messing around. That's good. The bourbon she's drank before the scotches have a heavier and richer mouthfeel. That may have something to do with it too. Yeah, you're not lying. That's true. They did because they were higher ABV. Wait, wait, wait. Keep that. So Silverlock saying that the, the you know those bourbons that we had, mm -hmm. you know they're higher like ABV. So those were like 50, 50, 57 percent. Well, these are lighter, and so maybe that has some influence on how much you're enjoying it at the moment. Because Thank you. See, that's the kind of shit I mean. Yeah, Silverlock. Thank you. I really appreciate that. All these cats here are eager to, and and have great advice on all this stuff. I appreciate that. Very happy to hear that Maria's having fun. I am Ben. It's so fun. I mean, I mean, I'm drinking for free, Ben. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm gonna throw it out there. I'm like, you know, I got some good whiskey from Murray, so. Mm -hmm. um, it pays and you're starting to, to know what good whiskey is, which is, which is yeah. awesome. I think it's hard to remember all the names. I think that's where I kind of get a little that's squirrely. True. That's true. I can't remember all the names. All right. Okay. So. We're moving on, folks. We're moving on, folks. I'm gonna I'm gonna water our glasses a little bit. Okay. I'm gonna run for just a second to get us some more water. And then we're gonna get we're gonna get a Spring little bang, huh? we're gonna get a little crazy with stuff. Oh, thank you, whiskey. We're gonna do uh, we're gonna do some art bag Uga doll when I get back. So you just sit tight for a hot second. Okay. I'll be right back. You can talk to the. Phone. I know. I was like, let me just scoot on it. What does it feel like to sit in his chair? Huh? Hey guys, welcome to Malt Whiskey, huh? He gave me this little chair with all these cushions. Um, yeah, so what are you guys doing? Yeah, Daniel, I'm totally drinking for free. Um, it pays off to know somebody who is in the whiskey world. I said, hey, I want to try this. I want to know what's going on. The next thing you know, I'm in Philly and I'm sitting here with you guys. And I've had a couple of tastings prior to this um, to help me kind of understand this when I come to see you guys. And so I think I, um, yeah, I think you guys mentioned like the higher alcohol. It might be my thing. I see where you're at. Um. <laughs> right. He's like six four, by the way. He's six four, and I'm only five. You know, five four. So he's got a whole foot on me. <laughs> yeah, but I still feel really powerful in the chair. I'm not gonna lie. Miss Mott, here we go. Well, you never know. You don't know. Hasn't shown interest yet, but we'll see. I think my whiskey tasting has to get a little bit better. You know. It's very, uh, yeah, I don't know about this chair. I think I kind of, let's see. You move back over. Yeah, well, no, I mean, I look really tiny in your chair. Now I look like I'm an appropriate sized human being. <laughs> <laughs> Did somebody call you Miss Malt? Is that what's Yeah, name? yeah, I got Is a little Miss Malt. I got a little Miss Malt. We'll see. But little do they know, we might have Malt Mondays. We might. Malt Mondays Maria, a little there triple M&M. &M. There might be a little Malt and Maria Monday coming up at some point in time. Said, I hope you two work out. So, Daniel, look at that. Oh, <laughs> if you want to steal something off my shelf, get the Inoc 24. You remember, I poured you some of the Inoc 24 earlier and you were all about it. About it. Remember? Oh, this one. Yeah, yeah. I like that one. Yeah, she was. Yeah, should it. I take that one? Is that the one, Andrew? I said, just drag that one. <laughs> just grab it. Just grab it. He pours so many so quickly that I don't have a chance to always know where they're going back on the shelf or like even remembering what they're called because, like, Obviously, they're all like random names, like kind of hard to say. <laughs> so it just, yeah, it makes it hard to steal. I know, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so speaking of, thank you, Indy, because we were going to go get a bottle of wine for tonight. We were. And I said, why do we need wine when we have so much whiskey? I was trying to switch it up, y'all. So you are I thought maybe correct. I was overwhelming her with the whiskey. No. I guess not, right? No, no, he, he was dead on. And now here we are. Online. Good for him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Abu mm. yeah. We we had I poured you the Abu Laura Abu Na the other night. Yes. Um I have no idea what which one it was. I think you said you liked it. We could do a tasting. We could do a little taste of that. I also did grab the Oogie because if y'all I mean everybody loves to see a whiskey noob drink it. Drink, uh, drink oogie for the why food. are you guys what are you guys doing to me is this like an initiation all right should we give her the nose first or should i just pour it we'll pour no it. they didn't answer yet <laughs> <laughs> mm. Mm. 
<laughs> I really like your people. You guys are great. This is what you do all the time. You be hanging out with your friends. Drink less. Yeah, they're good people. Drink you guys less, really drink are. Better, How Indy. fun. Indy, well put. Oh. Fruity Asvant. No, I haven't seen that one yet. Maria, none of us would have a problem if you were there with them. What do you think about that? Okay. I don't have a beard, but I could work on it. Yeah. <laughs> Indy, Indy ain't lying. All right. You guys are making me nervous. So I'm gonna go real light on this. So okay. Okay. before we start okay. tasting it and smelling it, let me give you let me give you a little bit of the background on this. Okay. What you so got? you know what to expect here. <laughs> this is one of my favorite whiskeys of all time. We need to get and some crackers. We do. We definitely do. But trust me, this one, you won't need crackers to taste. So our Begu Gadal, I did just drop a, uh, my finally dropped a review of this on my channel on you Friday. Did? If you haven't, go back and check it out. Friday. Uh, I did drop that. Uh, this is one of the few whiskeys where I would describe having a uh, malt see. moment with. I'm going to have a malt moment. This was a whiskey that was like blew my mind in so many ways. And so this is called Ardbeg. Wait, you have this. That's right there. Exactly. That's that. That's that this. is Isla. Okay, hold on a second. And, we, and you know a little bit about Isla because we talked about Isla. You know what's about to happen A here. single malt, which means it was one distil distillery mm -hmm. and it's all barley. barley. Got it. What's ABV on this? Why do I feel nervous? I feel nervous because somebody said, Ben, Ben, you're making me nervous. Why is this so exciting? <laughs> What's the ABV on this one? The ABV 54.2. All right. So this is coming in. This is coming in with some punch. So uh, for those of you who are not in the know about our big doll, this is a uh, it's a mix of ex bourbon with a little bit of ex sherry in it. One of my favorite whiskeys of all time. Um, and for damn good reason. It's fantastic. Now, Maria, Maria's never had an art bag. Stop pressuring me, Indy. Yeah. Maria's never had an art bag. And yeah. Maria's about to have an art bag. And so we've been having a couple different I smell asphalt already. Like, he poured it, and I already smell chemicals. This this is going to be... Like, I smell chemicals already. This is going to be a little something-something for you. Okay. Okay? Okay. So I can smell it all the way from here. So this is this is all ex bourbon with a little bit of cherry, but it's Isla, so it's heavily peated. Okay. It's a heavily peated smoky scotch. Okay. Shall we do it? I know I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> I did give her some Lagavulin 12 the other night, but you're getting a lot of love here. Should have picked up my own Ugadal. You better like it, says Indy. This is exciting. <laughs> and now the peer pressure. Now I start seeing the real side of the whiskey. Folks. You better movie. drink it, girl. <laughs> it's gonna be a roller coaster, and that's why it's exciting. Mm, Ugadal. Lots of love. Yeah. So okay, thank you, Andrew, because I think I tasted tasted something with Pete, right? Oh, you're about yeah, you had a log of and 12. Right. And so that's the smoky part, right? Yeah, the Pete is what's bringing the smoke. Okay. Pete, so I know uh, I've actually smoke, but Pete brings smoke. No, I'm glad he said that because I like, said no, but to expect a little bit. Oh yeah. Thank you, Andrew. This this is one of my favorite whiskeys of all time. I I again, as I was saying, I had a mild moment with this. So I'm gonna okay. go my I'm gonna go my soapbox for a second before we start here. Okay, so, all right. what one of the things I really love about the whiskey journey is that like you have these moments when you experience a specific whiskey that kind of like just blows your mind, right? It transcends everything. You're like, wow, I didn't realize I could love something like this so much. There's only a handful of those that I've had in my life. Okay. One of them is this one, and so I was at a New Year's party. And I had the regular Art Bag 10, and I love Art Bag 10. And I went to the shelf, and he has this bottle that says Art Bag Ugadal. And I was like, what's up with this? He's like, oh, yeah, man, feel free to have some. It's got a little bit of sherry in it. It's like a cast strength Art Bag with some sherry. I was like, okay. And when at the stroke of midnight, this would have been 2016, 2017, I drank some of this. I was so blown away by how good this whiskey was. I, I remember I was like in the New Year's party talking to people about the whiskey, and I was like, yo, like why like everybody's drinking punch or like some crappy beer and i'm like yo did you not see on the shelf like this guy's letting us drink his ugadol like you need to have this in your life and this is a whiskey i always keep stocked i got a couple of backups it's absolutely mind-blowing and uh it, this is one of those moments where i realized how much i love scotch children board i was just saying and he told me to pronounce it without actually saying it 
I didn't know what that you meant. You should have got me to pronounce it without saying it. Oh, yeah. Do you want to read that? Try to read that. No, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I barely know no, how to you, say. You can do it. You can do, do it. Trash. Oh, okay. No, do it. I, um, You've only heard it a couple times. So you, you, you no, no, I'm good. I'm good. What is it again? So that actually says, in this is obviously a, a, a Scottish Scot- Gaelic it? word. It's Ugadal. Ugadal. Yeah. So this U-G- Ugadal is actually U-G-Dale. a Ugadal. I would have said Ugadal. Ugadal. <laughs> Ugadal. <laughs> That's why I didn't try. That's why I didn't try. Let's try some Arbeg Ugadal. Ugadal. Yeah. So this is a whiskey. Uh, so it's named after the the lake that they source their whiskey from. Okay. So, Cheers, Let's guys. Go into the nose. For all of those. All right. Here we go okay. with the nose. You ready? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's not. <laughs> this is not a panty dropper, I'll tell you that. What do you smell? Campfire? Yes, I do smell campfire. It's <sighs> great. It's so sweet. There's like a little bit of fruitness. There's a little bit of citrus. A lot of sea, like seashore, sea, ocean air, maritime footnotes. And then just heavy bonfire road tar. Oh, like wow, you, Ben. So you've just gotten into all of this. You walked Appreciate. into a hospital. Earthy. <laughs> I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> you want to just All of us are watching everybody. <laughs> everybody, all eyes on Maria. I know, all 17 of you. Maria's like, what does it smell like to you? It smells like wine. Well, I mean, Ben ruined it for me because now I keep thinking of like now, you, chemicals, like asphalt. It. But I think it was in there. But I, I just, I think we just need to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to do it. It's one of those things you just do. As they say in Scotland, slant it up. Ciao. Okay, noise. Okay, you ready? Mm hmm. Oh. Just gotta make sure he's gonna be, you know what I'm saying? We all got jokes today. Okay. You did all of it? Mm-mm. Mm. Should I do all of it? Do I just do all of it or just a little set? Do all of it. Just do it, Silver Set. Okay, all right. Just do right, it. Right. Go for it, says Maher. Slanchava says Ben. <laughs> this is what y'all were looking for and you got it <laughs> oh maria oh. <laughs> real what's happening right now i just said so much <laughs> her eyes are watering for the record y'all. what was that <laughs> It feels like dirt. Like <laughs> feels like dirt. It feels like dirt. Like I like want to get it off. <laughs> no, Ben, you are no longer my friend. What's happening? Uh, What's happening with you right now? You're just like ruined popcorn. Wow. I'll tell you what I get. Andrew, you didn't say small sips before I did it. Everybody's drinking, drinking. It's going to be a good time. <laughs> Daniel that said, is Let's disgusting. Go. Mars laughing. Campfire, ash. That was your baptism, says Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> Cheer up. It could have been LaFroig. That's true. We could have went with the LaFroig. That's I, true. I don't know that one. But Maria, why? <laughs> That's one of my favorite whiskeys of all time. You like that? I like, have, like I, hey, let's I don't watch a little like, Netflix and Ogie. I don't like this. I love this. Really? This tastes to me. There is there is I have a little laugh, guys. And it's just so rude to waste whiskey when you're is. doing a tasting. It is. I think I, yeah. although when you taste wine, they tell you to spit it out. I've not once been told to spit any of this whiskey out, just mm-hmm. so we're clear. No. Is that a thing? Mm-mm. Or y'all just get drunk tasting whiskey. Yeah, you should just drink the whiskey. Okay. Oh, I got one more sip. Okay. Do it. Oh, that's so good. Oh, that is horrific. <laughs> it's just the worst. Y'all are the worst. Mm. 
better this time. I mean, does it not taste? I mean, like the smokiness, the ashiness is there for sure. It's very intense. And you get that like dry like, effervescent pea thing. But there's all sorts of sweetness. There's some like umami seafood kind of thing. Like you ate a piece of sushi. Don't you ever. Mm -hmm. Don't you compare sushi to oh, this. No. Don't you do that. This is like you ate a good piece of fish. No. Smoked fish. <laughs> it is the worst. It's the worst. You're doing all right, Maria. <sighs> so... Maria's but then the smaller sip was way more tolerable than like the gulp I took. So thank you. You've been baptized now, though. Yeah. I mean, welcome to the the peated smoky scotch. <laughs> Daniel's like, yeah, you just you just get drunk and then you really finish it. Finish it for us as modern. It is gone, the little guys. We did it. We got an LOL. Oh. Everyone has Oogie on the bar, pretty much. Damn right, Peter. Uh, it's a crime not to. <laughs> yeah, you guys almost. I gagged. You guys almost made me kind of. Uh, you know what I mean? That was intense. I felt like a rover. Yeah. <laughs> At least for now, exactly. No. Charred fish says says Silverlock. You know, I'm already still kind of trying to get rid of it. That I don't even want to think about fish. Smoked like, salmon <laughs> sushi isn't wrong. I agree. Yeah, smoked salmon. No, mira, I had smoked salmon for breakfast. Those yeah. are lies. Lies. <laughs> My smoked salmon did not. <laughs> it wasn't grilled over a burning car tire. Is that what you're saying? You ruined popcorn. <laughs> you ruined my popcorn. Like, does this taste ever come out? All hail our bag. Yes. Damn right. No, I feel like it's not going to. I love this stuff. I figured, Maria, this was going to be a shock to the system. Um, I think that's, you guys are rude. <laughs> <laughs> That was she so was upsetting. getting a little high and mighty, wouldn't you all agree? Let us know in the chat. Did she get a little high and mighty, thinking she was like getting her what what, and then you got to humble. This is this is what you call a humbling with. Oh yeah. This will humble. Yeah. This will humble the strongest. I course. felt some type of way about this. I, <laughs> I feel some type of way about this whole situation that went downhill quick. You know what I mean? Now I'm like, okay, maybe we should go get that wine. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Maria's, Maria's not having the oogie. Someday, right, y'all? You know, you know. Thank you, Daniel. It is. It's kind of. I don't know. I actually. <laughs> I feel. I feel like I licked my driveway <laughs> after a good rain. <laughs> Give us a thumbs up if you haven't yet, y'all. Uh, this has been a good two hours so far. You Maria? got any of the um, our big ten to taste? I don't have the our big ten. Uh, if you guys really want, we could go Octomar. What's the Cory? Oh, the Cory Vrecken is another Ardbeg release. I actually don't have it. It's more intense. I'm glad he doesn't have it because the first one was. <laughs> you know what I mean? I could give her the Ardbeg Black, which is full. That, that's a heavily peated whiskey, but it's that's fully aged in Pinot Noir. Really? You like you like the little wine in me? But the... What do you think, y'all? What is it called? Little, it's called Ardbeg Black. Black. <laughs> Yeah, it's called black, literally. You want to try it? But isn't that what I just tasted? Well, you tasted an art bag, but you didn't have the art bag black. This is going to be a smoky whiskey, but it's fully matured in Pinot Noir instead of ex bourbon, which is what you said with the little ex Jerry. Should I do that? What do you guys think? Should we do the black? Silver said it's more muted. <laughs> he says, give her the Lafroig 10 cat strength. No, I wouldn't do no, that. Me. Andrew Page says, reviews, you got any Ardbeg 10 for? I wish I did. I just finished my bottle of Ardbeg 10. Yo, people be calling for this. Go for the Octomor. He says, calm for the Lafroig 10 cat strength. See, now they just want to see you suffer a little bit. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Mm. You thought these people were your friends. I right? know. They totally like, like nah, they, they were like, come here. They're, just, they're here. just here for the, they're just here for the show. Like, give her the real shit. All right. Do the black at any rate. It's a nice looking bottle. That's true. All right. So you, here, here's the thing. Okay. You want to do the black or do you want to do an Octomore? You just say the word. I don't even know what an Octomore is. I know. So how am I supposed to choose? Octomore is just another another PD whiskey. So I have a PD whiskey and a PD whiskey to choose from. Yes. Okay. Tell them the choices. You you We can do Ardbeg Black Committee release. We can do uh, Octomore. We could do the uh, 6.1 or the 10-year-old, which is 
200 APPMs. Or I have a bottle of he said black okay. Lafroig. We could do a Lafroig 10 cast drink. Black. Let us know in the chat. Yeah, it is black, literally. Black. That's what they talk about on it. So you let us know in the chat. We'll take a couple votes. We'll see what we got here. We've seen a lot for Lafroig 10. We've seen some black. Andrew says black. Ben Demon Hunter says black. Y'all are being shady. I feel like they're trying to set me up. Oh, I'm nervous. It's a whole different. I mean, you're, you're going to experience things that are wholly different. Silverlock says, go for the Octomore 10. Daniel says, we love her, but here for the LOLs. She's been a champion tonight. Thank you, Daniel. There you go. You know. Getting an Octomore 10, says Highland Park. That was my trivia. I, I'm hearing you on the Highland Park, but we just did Ugadol. So, like, we're already in the zone. So I'm thinking at this point, Blah. <laughs> Snearson said Highland Park. I, I don't. So the only Highland Park I can do is the 21, but I feel like that's going to get lost. T squared. What's up? Any of the three will blow our mind. Yes, you're totally right. You're totally right. What's the PP on the black? That I don't know. I appreciate know. T. What is it? T squared? Thank you for keeping it real because that was atrocious. <laughs> like, I think I like legitimately was like, <laughs> okay, we're going to go Octomor. We're going to go Octomor and then uh, we'll go from there. I mean, this is trial by fire. I mean, she's already went Oogie. I totally hear you on the Highland Park 12. I would have done Highland Park 12. No, Donner. Had I thought about this prior to giving her Oogie because that would have been a good intro. But since we're already kind of where we at, we'll do one more heavily peated just for her own shits and giggles. Can only go up for movie. Yeah, let's go Octomar. All right, we're gonna do. Thank Octomore. you. I mean, that's encouraging. So I got the Octomar six point one Scottish. The Octomar. Yeah, Ben, give 10, me some help here. I have the ten point three Isla Barley, and then I have the ten year old, and that's the two hundred eight ppm. That made my made me cry and everything. That was intense. We're gonna do the ten year old. That was so intense. You guys are <laughs> awful. Oogie, never again. Fuck. Never again. No. She says. She says that now. All yeah. right, y'all. Okay, let's go. Okay. So Maria's gonna Maria's gonna get into something. Here. Okay. So I'm gonna tell you a little something about a Peter Scotch, Maria. So um, there are some people who believe that parts per million of peat within a whiskey is something that like you can actually taste. Now, for the most part, mm -hmm. you really can't taste beyond 30 parts per million, okay. is what is said. Because it's just how the human taste buds are. That Arbeg Ugadal is about 35, 40 ppms. What we're about to have right now is 208 ppms. <laughs> so this is three times more peated, but maybe less smoky than the Ugadol. And this is called so it's Octomore, less smoky. Perhaps. I less like smoky. less smoky. This is the Octomore. This is a 10-year-old Octomore. This is the fourth edition. 208 ppms. Uh, this is about like 54.3% ABV. You know, Ben hasn't even tried this yet. Yeah. Well, you're about to. And apparently, once I go, blah, <laughs> I'll never go back. <laughs> <laughs> that might be true. Okay. Oh, that was a lot. So, you know, I'm going to take this class. Yeah, thank you. Because I'm going to. That was a heavy pour, guys. Yeah. And I didn't make, I almost didn't make it through the last one. So this, I think you actually are going to like more. Okay. But it is 208 parts per million PPM, whereas Art Bag 35 Let's see what they got to say before we start, shall we? Yes. I would like to take plenty except of time. Dustin, except Dustin. Yeah, that's no doubt. <laughs> plenty of time. Yeah. Oh, boy. This should be interesting. By the way, I've not had any Octomore, but I have a sample of the 8.3 at 306. You know, you should pour that. T Square, one of my favorite reviews of LaFroig says, This is like band aids and burning tires. I love it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? That that our bag was a little bit like that, right? Like you walked into a hospital that was on fire. It was horrific. It was horrific. Deliciously so. <laughs> Everybody's just laughing. No joke. Here we go. Ben Demon Hunter. Love the duo show. Hey, cheers, Capo. Appreciate it. I'm enjoying it quite a bit too. We're having a good time. Uh-huh. Our bag was, yeah, 55. Okay. So this is about four times as PD as our bag. Okay. So I'm nervous. This is called the Octomore. Uh, so by the way, just for everybody who knows, a bottle of Ardbeg Goodall. This is about what 75, 80 bucks USD. Uh, this this Brooklotti, This is the Brooklotti, uh Octomore ten point. This is the ten year old fourth edition. 
It's about two hundred seventy-five dollars. Oh, you see, that got so, a little hiccup. So just for the just for your point of reference, that last one gave me hiccups. Uh oh, y'all are wrong. Look at that. Okay, what am I tasting? If okay. this is wrong, I don't ever want to be right. I want to be wrong. I'm going to be right. So this is uh, this is fully aged in ex bourbon barrels. This is 208 parts per million peat. So this is four times, three times as peaty as the Arbeg Ugadal that we just had. What does that mean in like my language? I don't know. What do you smell on this? I find it to be very sweet, citrus, lemon, lemon meringue, cotton candy. No, I'm just kidding. It's cotton candy. Uh, there's some green apples. There's a, definitely a lot of smoke. There's definitely, yeah, no, there's smoke, but I do feel like there's like a citrus to it. Definitely. That cuts citrus. through the smoke. Definitely is. Yeah, exactly. And right. there's also like a sea, like a, like, like, a, 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 um, you know, salty ocean water element to it. Like, what it, did you know about the ocean over here know. in Philly in the winter, in the middle of winter? <laughs> I know a thing or two. Mm. There's definitely like a, like a fishiness to it, like a little bit of a savory note. Mm hmm. Hmm. Intense though. The the peat is intense. Like there's an intense center on this whiskey that is just like in your face. I'm nervous. Hmm. You get vanillas too. Like there's an, like you get a light vanilla. I get vanilla. All right. Shall we? Yeah. Okay. Maria's about to drink freaking Octomor, y'all. Okay. Slunch of a. I'm okay. Happy Saturday. Hello. Here we go. <laughs> mm. <laughs> mm. That is intense. Huge, sweet, sour, savory, and then you are just blasted with the peat. But it's juicy. It's not ashy and smoky as much as the Ardbeg in a way. No. But the intensity on the tongue. No, it's is like huge. burns. It burns. Burns, it's like right? Burns. Yeah, in the back. Why well, hold mine? I don't know. I haven't figured out the chewing thing. So I just gurg kind of do a little gurgle motion with, with the mouth. But um Wow, that is now I'm getting the ash on the finish. Yeah. It's such a good whiskey. I don't like the ash on the finish. What's that? What's yeah, that about? Like the cigar, the cigar smoke. I don't like that. What's that about? Yeah, some people are new. I don't like it. Some people are into it. You got hiccups? I do. I have hiccups. I'm totally. <laughs> <laughs> but at least I didn't gag. Like that was totally different than what I just. Did you actually. So let me ask you this, Maria. And this will be fun for the scotch heads out there. Because this is the Thank first you, time ben. she had both of these. So we just did the Octomore. 10 years old. Um, 208 ppm. And the Ugadal, which I don't know. Anywhere from 30 to 50 ppm. What do you think was the most intense experience of these two? Like in terms of just like what fucking hit you in the face harder? I mean, do we have to really think about this, folks? Yeah, we, like, I think we do. I almost she threw chooses up. the oogie. I almost threw up. And this is, but you're proving a really scientific point. So one of Octomore's big things about their whiskey is like advertising how high PPM it is. And as I've always said, like, I, you know, and I think uh, a rep from Diageo told us about, like, the human tongue can't really pick up more than 35 ppm. Mm. So after that, like, it's all just window dressing. The oh, thing yeah. about this Ugadol, I think it is also more intense than this Octomar. And that's because it's younger and it is also, like, the Ugh. smokiness is so intense. Whereas you No, know, it gave me hiccups. I <laughs> gagged. There was, a, there was a lot that happened. Yeah, no. And I'm mad that you guys made me do this now. Instead of waiting until the end of the night. Shame on you. Shame. Yeah, I don't know where we go from here. I know, yeah, no. Like now I just taste like I just eat grass and gravel. So <laughs> now I'm like, what am I doing in the whiskey whiskey world? <laughs> I just feed me a Syrah. And she paces, I think she likes it. Maria uh Maher's is small sips. I wish I was drinking an Octomore right now. However, I got the Anak 24, yes, which you had earlier tonight. Freaking Anak 24, man. You cannot go wrong. Silverlux has some grass and hay barnyard, perhaps, this one? Hmm? I think Silverlux got a good No, point. I was trying. I don't have the sugar, but I was trying the gulp of water for the hiccups. 
Daniel, I hear you on that. I really, really enjoyed that. I can smell the pee through my phone, says Mother. Y'all, it wasn't like, like uh, <laughs> it's it <gets> so gross. <laughs> like, I've been eating popcorn and it won't go away. Like, I just feel dirty. <laughs> ben Damanis is very well done. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. <laughs> She's been initiated into the Isle of Peace. Yeah. Yeah. You guys Maria. almost just scared me away, by the way. Have a half teaspoon of sugar and a gulp of water. That I was fix so I did. I was just saying I don't have the sugar, but I was trying the water. Getting some love. Hats off to you, Maria. Mm. Proud of you for doing that. <laughs> that, that was, was rough. That was very rough. My thoughts on the Octomore Ten, like honestly, it's a it's a tamer Octomore. Like the the heavy peat is there, but like there's a lot more sweetness and like light orchard fruit that comes through this, which I think is really interesting given, look, the bottom line with Octomore is they're doing amazing stuff with a really young mm -hmm. whiskey. The mm -hmm. complexity going on in this, I think is incredible. Is it a $275 bottle worth it? No, but it's delicious. And the heavy peat, I feel like it accents the fruit notes on this really well. I'm a big fan. Um, Brook Lottie is just one of those desserts. And it has some of that classic Brook Lottiness that that sweet grain, sweet barley note, which I I feel like you pick up in all the Brook Lotties. You can tell their signature new make style, and it comes through even in the Octomore, which is smoky as hell and heavily peated. Um, I'm a big fan. Mm. Just chocolatey even. So good. God damn. That is... I, I personally think it's fantastic. This 10-year-old is fantastic. There's even like juicy fruit gum. If you remember what juicy fruit gum is. That's not get crazy. No, it's there. It, it like you, I know you're getting that, but like there's the mouthwatering element. Like you, it makes you want more or like a hot cinnamon gum. Yes, big red. Big red. That feeling big red gives you where your mouth just, como se dice, salivates. Eh? Yeah, salivates. Salivates. It's, it's like, it's like, it's intense, but you want more. I'm not mad at this. I have to say, like, after sitting back for a second, I took a little minute. Having that sip did not upset me. I feel like, like, it was doable. Like, it was like, I can see what you're saying now. Like, you're, like, all, like, excited about this. What do you say if we uh, try a couple different other Octomores? Some small sips. What do you think? I don't know. Do Should I do that? It? You feel up for it? I think I'm a little done with that. You done with that one, but uh, what if I poured you a different Octomore that's supposed to have a little different flavor profile? When you say different flavor profile, what do you mean? No, you'll have to find out for yourself. You okay. Know, it's not going to be smoky like the Arbeck. Okay, so show it to them, and then I'll try it, and we'll see what they say if they've All had right. it. So we have two options. I'm going to – Maria Maria seems to be warmed up to the Octomore a little bit. We could do an Octomore 6.1, which is the Scottish Barley release, or we can do an Octomore 10.3, which is Isla Barley. Um, Let's try it. I could try it. I'm a little nervous, but it's not going to be as smoky. I mean, it's going to be what it is. But Once I, I heard asphalt, like that is the best <laughs> explanation I've ever heard. Like it literally felt like I was just like, ah, there goes the driveway. All right. It was not yummy. Mm, no. I'm going to pour you a little something. Here. But we did start really nicely tonight for we those did. who are still with us. Like it was a really we nice got gradual. got 16 folks in the chat and we've been here for, where are we at? Yeah, it's two hours, 15 minutes. Not bad. You know, we started off so nicely. I feel like you guys are just like, put her to bed. Give her the stuff. Very high chance I'm getting the Port Charlotte 10 for my birthday next month. Maybe she would like that with the wine influence. I love the Port Charlotte 10. That's a four out of five whiskey for me. Unfortunately, I don't have a bottle. Um, but otherwise, I would give it to, uh, I would definitely pour that. Lost Cause says the best whiskey will always stick with you. Hmm. Real sock. T squared says you'll taste it tomorrow. <laughs> That's the worst. I don't want to taste this tomorrow. I still taste it. Rats and gravel. Can you smell it. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> Andrew Page says rats and gravel is a great tasting note. <laughs> it was the worst. Rats and gravel. Yeah. <laughs> Eric says okay to the Octomore. Yeah, Octomore Ten is the ten year old is fantastic. TC Ten is tasty. Haven't had it. Road tar. Somebody said exactly yes, yeah. thank you. Like when you're waiting and they're like, Stop, go, stop. Very interesting that Maria hated the Ukadal but liked the Octomore 10. Very cool. 
Yeah. I mean, you 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 would say that maybe that second one. You, I'm not gonna say you liked it, but no, I did not like. Oh, let me have more. But it was not. It didn't make me gag my popcorn up. Snearson says road tar. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Exactly. So, yes. you know, we're going to just roll with this. So what I got next here, this is another Octomore. Okay. But it's very different. So this is it looks the, lighter. This is the Octomore. Well, it's just because you can see through it. <laughs> the other one had a black bottle. All right, fine. <laughs> <laughs> this one is the Octomore 10.3. This is six years old. This is Isla Barley. So the 0.3 releases of Octomore, all the Isla Barley. PPM wise on this, 114. Six years old, non-chill natural, of course. And we're going to see if Maria has, uh, see what Maria's reaction is well, to this Well, Ben, what, is, what do you think that says about my palate? That I would not like the other one. I mean, well, I well. agree with her that the art bag is more intense than the Octomore. Obviously. Despite the like, higher peat level. I actually, you guys are wrong. They all knew this. You guys all, I had no clue what I walked into. I, 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 I'm in agreement. I... It's weird, despite the like they quote, got me. level. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Am I doing this? Mm. Okay. One moment, because I'm going to join you. Okay. Okay. So what Let's we're going to do here is the Octomore 10.3. Okay. Isla Barley. So this is the locally sourced. Everything that barley comes off Isla. Another great for Pilates expression. Okay. This is going to be a little less smoky. Um. I think I think this is gonna have a different flavor, but you're still gonna. You have guys, a lot I'm of kind of over this tar though. Like I already picked <laughs> up the tar. Like I'm like upset about this already. I'm all like, I don't like it. Um. So Maria's drinking some seriously heavily peated whiskey tonight, y'all. And for a new, let's give her a round of applause. Give us a thumbs up. Seriously, this sucks. <laughs> it's just like he's like, come on, come on, you'll be great. Sipping Saturdays. I just ate like I ate your driveway. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. If you like seeing Maria eat driveway, give us the thumbs up. Yes. Give us a uh, subscription if you've left yet to, man. We'd appreciate the support. And uh, you may or may not see uh, potentially, probably more than likely, but we'll see. Well, they almost scared me away. You might have some Malta Maria Mondays coming up sometime they, in the relative kinda, near future. <laughs> they kind of scared me Maybe away. Maybe we'll shy away from the heavily peated Isla single malts, but. Bad. Andrew. And led you astray. Yes, you all of them. They did. All of them. Maher says Maria is a pro, though. Who says this? Maher. <laughs> Thank you. This is the worst. Andrew Maria is becoming quickly acclimated to peas. So, yeah, I mean, we're doing it trial by fire. That's for sure. Didn't make me gag on my popcorn as high praise, says Jack and Pickled Out. <laughs> I mean... I was channeling Quigs. Yeah. Yes. Snearson. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Don Holland is in the house. What's up, Don Holland? Hello, Don. Small to Maria. Cheers, folks. Cheers back to you, ma'am. Nice to you see you. You missed it, Don. I almost threw up my popcorn. She had some Mooga doll. It was a mm. thing. She wasn't. They a huge set fan. me up for failure, Don. <laughs> yeah, she's diving into the deep end for sure. Yeah. Sip the Oogie next. Exactly. Time. That's we'll the see. whole thing. Like, and I think um well, that's what we're going to do right now. Mayor said that too. It's like sipping it makes a difference. So thank you. Well, we're going to we're going to test that theory right now. So, Octomore 10.3. Uh, this is Isla Barley release um, okay. from 2019. This is 114 ppm, six years old. <laughs> Shall we nose it? Let's nose it. Smudge. Oh, you guys, it still smells as shitty as the other ones. <laughs> But sweeter. I get a lot of sweetness on it. It is too. sweet. There's a lot of like sweet corn. It is sweet. Ben, you ain't innocent. It's Lies. Like, yeah. I'm sorry. I read the comments as we yeah as I'm nosing. Hmm. There's like honeycomb. Dry honey. A little bit I of can butter. see honey. Yeah. I can see honey. When you get past the driveway, as <laughs> <laughs> you get past the tar. You get the burning. Yeah, when I mean, you get past all of that. There's also like a really nice. Well, like burnt sanitizer. It. Yes. <laughs> you shouldn't be excited about I'd that. Like, like you should it. not. <gasps> Who's drinking stuff that tastes like burnt sanitizer? <laughs> no, ain't right. You're never drinking wine and go, mmm, this tastes like dirty socks. Lovely. <laughs> Lovely. Can't love wait it. to have some of this on a Friday night. Love it. 
Thank God it's Saturday, right? Let's give it a sip. Okay. Salon Cheers. Time. Mm. So the Isla Barley thing stands out hardcore for me on this one. Very sweet barley. Nice, like, orchard fruit thing. A little bit of the melon, a little bit of the pear. Nice. It's really hard to go past eating your driveway. <laughs> it has a little bit. Do you notice a difference between this and the 10-year-old Octomar we just had? Oh. I do though. Yeah. I do because I even like this one more. So yeah. I don't know what direction we're going in, guys, but like I like where we're going. This <laughs> has more of like a candy. Like there's like a there's a sweetness like to a, it. Like it's more of a sugary sweetness. And I like that it's um what do you guys call it when it stops? The finish the is short, quick. The shorter finish. It's a shorter finish. Hmm. I mean, I'm still I mean, in general, I'm gonna taste like driveway for like three days, but yeah. She is. You might as well have just had a stogie. Right, <laughs> I like to smell my own breath in my mask. <laughs> it is a lot. It's a lot. It is a lot. But I like this one more than I than all the other ones. That's true. That's good to know, actually. So, a bottle of Octomore ten point three is about two hundred fifty dollars. Um, I really love it. I think this is the best Isla Barley Octomore release they've done in a while. I highly recommend it. I think it's got good balance. Even Maria is uh, tepidly interested in it. Ah. <laughs> and we got 22 folks in the chat, so uh, Shit. we're at two and a half hours. You guys right? got me this? again. What is, what's up? I'm making so much juice. <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm not going to comment on that. What's this? What, what, what is that? That's making it just, ah. it's the Pete. Oh, it's the smoky Pete. Let's see what else we got going on. Oh, Any Huntington picture? beach. We got Huntington beach in the house. Hey. Delicious, Maria. Enjoy, says Don Holland. Go team Karchus. Ooh, maybe we should do a Karchus. More Mr. Whiskey Reviews. What's up, Rod? How you doing, buddy? Good to see you, man. I got a little, I got a comrade in arms with me tonight. We're hanging out. Rod, if y'all are into beer, take a second, open a window, subscribe to Rod J Beer Ventures. Rod does great live streams Rod. on Thursdays. Rod's the man. Rod, I'm coming. They made me eat driveway. I'm coming, Rod. <laughs> Maria's going to come your way, Rod. You're it's disgusting. My mouth is disgusting right now. <laughs> You're going to expect some new subs. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spare yeah, you Yeah, just the take of all of that. I'm I gonna can't. I'm going to spare you the rest of that. I can't. <laughs> Could you imagine being at a bar and being like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> Not really. It's gross. I like it. It's disgusting. This part's good. Well, if I met you and you were drinking, I'd be like, what the fuck? She would. So you know what we're gonna do for Maria? Yeah. I get you a little water in there. We're gonna go back to your favorite. Can scotch. I just get something that like make me feel better about my life? Yeah, you're gonna get. You can have some of your favorite scotch, the Glendronic 15. What happened here? I was just cleaning up a mess. Okay, that you made. Okay. Yeah, it was a little bit of water. You're gonna get some of your uh, 15 revival in there. Okay, we're gonna do. We're gonna do this one it's again. Good to see you, Rod. Yeah. For those who don't know, this is my new favorite. It is. Yeah, yeah. She loves this one. I like this one. It's a great choice. It does not taste yes, like exactly. tires. Exactly. Go past it. Find yeah. the glory behind the smoke. That's what I'm trying to help her with, but you know, it's going to have to happen. Burn sanitizer. That's a complex note indeed. See, look at you. Thank you. It's like Thank somebody you. lit Whiskey. your, your, Snearson says you like lit your bottle of sanitizer on fire and that's what you're tasting. That's exactly what it reminded me of. Not that I've lit sanitizer on fire. Maybe a little. I don't know. It could have happened. <laughs> Let's have. Both PD whiskey side by side. Which one do you like? Yeah. Oh, good one. Should we do that? I don't like either of them. <laughs> She's not a fan of the Pete. Things no. started out strong, but it's just so intense. Mm -hmm. Like you really, I mean, like this has got to be in your blood to fuck with it. Like it's intense. She's not lying. Yeah. No. Oh, look. Oh, we got a Kate in the house. We got a hey. Kate in the house? <laughs> it's Kate. What's Ooh, up, whoop. Kate? Hi. Yeah, we're just hanging out on YouTube drinking whiskey. You know. A couple hours. Where's your husband, Kate? Where's the little homie at? John Holland says, Karchus, wonderful. P. Major. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Thank you, Don. I'm not even sure what a P head is, but I'm into it. We'll see. Wait, she says, uh, we're coming in hot from HB. 
Oh, they're from Honey's Beach. They're at the beach house. They are the beach house. So just so you guys know, Miss Kate is a very sweet and bestie of mine. Um, we had the privilege of being at her wedding, didn't we? We did. We, did. we sure did. We did. And I was staying at their beach house when you guys saw me doing my remote satellite West Coast stuff a couple months ago. Oh, you were? Yeah. I did oh, a couple of shows from there. I didn't know this. I had invited you had I known. Mm. You didn't know I like whiskey, huh? You'll be invited next time. Okay. Ben Demon Hunter says, having art bag, then having to go outside with a mask on. <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> Andrew Page says, I could have just been imagining things, but there's something different about Bro Blotty and Kill Home and Isla Barley release. I totally agree. I There's a quintessential flavor profile of the Isla Barley. From I agree from both, especially Bro Blotty. Like the the barley note that you get in the Octomore on the Isla Barley's is the same that you get on the Port Charlotte's, in my opinion. Maria, you are so lucky to have these delicious stuff so handy, and please do enjoy all of that. I do. I actually, I was just saying that before. I'm sure you joined, but I um, I came in and I was able to just taste all of these high quality whiskeys and scotches and different bourbon mixes, and it's been so. I do want to say thank you because it Absolutely. has been fabulous. Um, I've gotten to really understand my own palate. Um, which is really complicated, apparently. It is, as it always is. Yeah. It's all about the journey. Yeah, and so, yes, I do enjoy all of them. Yeah. Um, I'm very grateful that I have this opportunity. And thanks, everybody, for hanging out and uh, doing this journey with us. It's been yeah. Great. And uh, we can go for a little bit longer if you want. Um, well, let's see. Do, would they like me to taste anything different? I mean, I'm up Give us to, some suggestions. I'm feeling a little better now that the tar and dirty driveway is leaving Rod my mouth. Rod says hi to you as well. Rod, hello. Rod's the man. And he gets down the glasses down in Holland. Caitlin says, yum. Yeah. Mm. T squared said Glendronic 15, one of his faves, which is. Is it? Right? I that's her so jam right now. That's her jam right that's now. That's my thing. Eric, why did you torture Maria after a good <laughs> cool progression? <laughs> Thank you. Is that ben, well, I feel first like, of all, I feel Ben like they is all a traitor. Tra ben, don't act like you're on my side. You were all for this like 20 minutes ago when I about threw up my popcorn, okay? <laughs> like, I was not expecting that. That was intense. It was intense. I had to get it together after that. I was like, it was a situation. It was a little bit of a situation. All right, you felt that? Yeah. Yeah. Ben, don't act like you're on my side. I see you. She's calling you up, Ben. You, ben. You, better, you better recognize <laughs> Rod said, uh, oh, not yet at Don Holland. Oh, he's talking about some beer stuff. What else we got going on in the chat? Caitlin. Virtual hug. That will taste different. Andrew Page says, after the outbreak of the Brook Lottie, yeah, I agree. Says, love y'all. Kaylin. Hello from Philly. That's the homie. What's LA. It? Down the street from you. I will come visit soon. And we're, uh, we're we're holding it. We're keeping it real in Philly, aren't we? We are. We are keeping it very real in Philly. I would say so. Yeah. Too. Do you smell the asphalt in my breath? I like it. You smell it? Yeah, I smell it. It's so disgusting. <laughs> I think I'll never date again. What's in the glass down in Holland? Getting some hug, uh, some Caitlin. We're saying hi to Rod. That's good. We got 21 folks in the chat. Okay, so what should so I gotta, do? Now, now I feel it. like I have to like taste something, but can you guys please, I don't want to taste any more like as vault. <laughs> I don't want to. I got a few ideas. I don't want to eat a driveway. Like that stuff, like stays inside. Like, <laughs> like I feel like I have orange cones around my face right now that says "laying new asphalt." <laughs> like, like beware. <laughs> All right, fire hazard. I'm gonna think about something. I'm thinking about maybe pouring her. Um, I'm thinking about going with the Edredar. Oh, the Paul John Christmas. People were saying. Who is that, Andrew? What are you doing, Andrew? You want to do Paul, Paul John Christmas edition? I mean, Christmas, that sounds like cranberry cinnamon. Like, maybe I'll like that. Let's do that. What's his name? That's Andrew Page. Andrew, don't don't mess with me, Andrew. So here's what we got. Bert we're we're going we're gonna to get Maria. We're going to wean Maria off the peat. And we're going to do it with this <laughs> fabulous whiskey, which, by the way, folks, if you haven't had yet, you've got to get your hands on. This is the Paul John Christmas edition 2020. This is in this is from India. It's got a little bit of peat. Not much, but it is ex bourbon, ex Oloroso, and first fill virgin cask. So we're talking about a ton of complexity coming in at 46% non-chill filtered. 
I did a live stream last week. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It said uh, me live with the Christmas whiskey. This is one of my favorite whiskeys already this year. Will probably make my top five. I highly recommend people get their hands on it. Paul John's making some good stuff. And uh, I'm going to give Maria a little taste to it. Okay, here we go. This is going to chill things out a little bit. Okay. So you got yourself a nice little... I'm all like itching my head. I'm all a little nervous now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all like... She's nervous. like, is this going to be know. like a cannon shot in my face? You know what I mean? Like... Meanwhile, I'm going to sip a little bit on this Oxymore. And we are at two and a half hours. We've got 20 minutes. Okay, okay. Let me see. You. Let's give a little, little shout out to our peeps. Hey, What's thank up, you guys. Everybody? So for all of you that are just joining us or came in halfway through... I am new to whiskey. I started with bourbon, kind of the bullet brand, whatever, and have kind of what 101 turkey. Yeah, you did and the then turkey. we went to monkey shoulder. Yeah. A little and bit then scotch. from there, I went to this entire assortment behind me. So I very privileged to have tasted very different whiskeys from small to big prices. Um, and I don't like gravel. <laughs> She is not a fan of the So poop, whoever so. just drinks gravel out of a cup, power to you. That's disgusting. <laughs> and they set me up today. They were like boosting me up and then like shot me down oh, quick. Everybody <laughs> wants to see you drink the peat scotch for okay. the first time. But now you got something that's going to be a little one? bit more tame. This is the Paul John. This is an Indian whiskey. So this is a single malt whiskey from India. It's going to have some bourbon, some sherry. A little bit of peat, so it'll still like have a little bit of that, but it's gonna tone it down exponentially. And hopefully, it smells berry. It smells berry, like it's like a berry type. There's a lot. There's a ton of complexity in that one for sure. Like, we, like a raspberry kind of feel. Maher is really excited for it. Paul oh Dan yeah, Christmas. He says, "Go for it." This is our boy. He is in India right now. It is what for you? Seven a.m., eight a.m. Maher, <laughs> you Maher better is not be drinking whiskey. We're gonna have an issue, okay? <laughs> Maher, Maher is chiming in all the way from New Delhi, so he's Ooh, letting you know. Where's New Delhi? It's like North Central India. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so he knows what's up. You will be getting a, you will be getting a sample of this from me soon, my friend. No doubt. Oh, I'm nervous. Be nice okay. to Maria at Tasty Indian Whiskey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go. I'm late to this show, but it's been nice seeing you, says Don Holland. Oh, thank you, Don. Mm. Imagine drinking that by a Christmas fire. <laughs> Delicious stuff. Just hooked up with Paul John Pete Cast Strength. Yes, dude. Yes. I love Paul John. It's one of my most Paul John and Ben Romick are the distilleries I'm most excited about this year. How's that landing with you? I kind of like it. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? I like that. What is this? So what am I the, doing? Here's the two. Okay. Ooh. This is the Paul John Christmas Edition 2020. Oh. It's got a whole bunch of maturations. So what you're drinking okay, here, you, you got some ex bourbon, you got some ex sherry, you have some virgin oak, which means like there ain't no, nothing in it before, and there's a slightly peated match. So you're just getting so a you whole get a little of, bit of smoke. A little bit, but not much. Right? No, it was nice to take a break from the asphalt. <laughs> that was intense. Yeah, it was intense. Why didn't you warn me? I think I, I thought did. we were friends. See how you did me? We're friends. See how you did me? They just throw me under the mm -hmm. bus. Take that. I don't want that. You want that, though. I do want those. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this one, why do I like this one more? It's like less smoky, so less pe peated. Yeah, very less peated. Le very There's less peated. a lot peated. of interesting, like, scents and spices. Um, maturations, Kate said. What is this? Yeah, it's definitely the maturations. So well, what's that word mean? Well, it's what you know. She says words we don't know. I don't know them. It's what, it's what the whiskey was aged in. So what you're drinking here is whiskey. So it's in India, right? And this is whiskey that was aged in some bourbon casks. So you're getting some of the bourbon notes. It was aged in sherry casks. So Which you get, the, that and that's too. how you get the color too. Yeah, and it's a natural color. That's why you're getting such a nice, tame, more like complex, fruity. Yes, Kate. It's the maturation. Just figured that out. <laughs> She's a very good friend of mine. Indy says I may have a problem. I put whiskey in my oatmeal, says Indy. <laughs> it be like that sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you need a little pick me up in your oatmeal. I'm not going to say nothing. No one's going to tell on you. Eat a little oatmeal with a little whiskey. Yep. 
So Maher, our friend in India, says, told you. This is my apology for the hour break. He's, he's, he tell, he's telling you. He's telling you you're drinking that. Yeah, it's good. It's fucking delicious, isn't it? That is one of my favorite whiskeys I've had so far this year. So much complexity, tons of crazy flavors going on. Spices. I crazy. like it. I mean, I feel like I would like anything after eating tar. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. Ben Demon Hunter is getting put on blast. I have, like, I feel like his name sticks out. So even if it wasn't him, he's getting blamed anyway. Like, you know how women do. We'll just blame you. Um, so it's your fault, Ben. Um, but it doesn't taste like, no, it doesn't taste like tar. So I feel like I kind of like it a little more. It's good. I hope you're enjoying it. I love that whiskey. Mm -hmm. That's actually one of my favorite whiskeys that I've had this year, as I was saying. Um, I got it unexpectedly. These are not easy releases to get in the United States from Paul John, these Christmas editions. But I would tell people unequivocally at $80 price point, this is a whiskey worth buying. For sure. It well, why was this your favorite this year? Because of the complex. Well, so far it's because it has so much complexity in it. Okay. There's so much array of flavor and it's coming through at a high alcohol level at 46%. Mm -hmm. It is non-chill filtered, which means they're not stripping out any of the oils. It just, it hits on every front. It's got a little bit of peat, so you get a little smoke, but you get what I found mostly is like hazelnuts, mm -hmm. tons of red fruit. There's a little bit of that bourbon note. Like, it's all just happening at once. It's like a fucking carnival. That Is whiskey. that right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like Barnum and Bailey going on in that glass. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It is. It's just it's just delicious. I'm not there yet. I'm not there well, yet. You're, I, mean, you're, I don't, you're I don't taste a, the carnival. You're in a bit of shell shock right now because you just I, There was a, a lot that happened to me tonight for those who have <laughs> not been with us. Like, okay, whoa. Marie ate a tire on fire. She did. You guys saw it, but that is that is some tasty ass stuff. All right, y'all. I do like this. Yes, I'm glad you enjoyed. I it. think this is a good time for us to say goodbye. I, I agree. Yeah, we appreciate y'all for hanging out tonight. Um, this is the first uh, first uh, Malta Maria show. I think yes. it went pretty well. If yes. you enjoyed it, give us a thumbs up. Take yes. a second, smash that thumbs up button. If you have not subscribed yet to Mom User Whiskey Reviews. Subscription button is right there. We would love your support. And uh, perhaps well, you will see a Malta Maria show in the near future. Yeah. And just double check the, the messages. Just make sure we don't miss anybody. Because you're only important. You spent your time looking at us. You know what yeah, I mean? You did. Like, I appreciate that. Paige says, I'm her house Sunday going. Must be early in the morning. Oof. Ben Demon said, you nailed it. Being oh, blamed thank for you, it. Ben. Absolutely. But all in good fun, <laughs> says Ben. Ben's up in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Oof. We got Maher all the way in New Delhi, India. And we get cheers, cheers to Maria. It's been nice. I'm still burping up asphalt. Is that what is it asphalt? So yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna you know help Maria out with this situation. Um, but uh, yeah, hit the thumbs up. Do hit subscribe if you haven't. And um, until then, uh, we'll probably have another Malt Maria show sometime soon. And yeah, maybe it'll become a regular thing. We'll see. We'll see. But until then, uh, stay safe. Be well. Wear a mask. Yes. Don't be getting COVID. Uh, Don't be a dick. We're in 2021. Stay healthy. Be well. Mm -hmm. And uh, enjoy your good spirits responsibly. Or if you're responsibly, you know. You know. Keep it right. Keep it tight. You know right? what I mean? All right. <laughs> Bye, Stay guys. Stay safe. Be well, y'all. Thank you.